Welcome to PIR. It's uh, approximately 10 minutes past uh, 9, so I'm a little late on the 3rd of the 1st, 2016, seemingly. The first thing I want to say to you all is, well, one, Happy New Year, and uh, welcome back. Uh, word has been spreading about uh, what we're doing here at People's Internet Radio. In fact, all of us, not just me, you know, far from it, just, not just me. Uh, all the different hosts that have been operating on People's Internet Radio. And again, for 2016, I'd like to reiterate that um, when I'm on, I can be held to account for what I say. As when the guys from Open Your Mind or, you know, their guests or any of the other hosts on any of the other days during the week, whether it's Mark Windows whether it's, um, you know, uh, uh, Pat from Scotland is free, uh, Sean McGuire, any of them, Dr. Rock, we all accept that if I say something, then it's me you need to bring it to. If you have an issue with what I said, it should be me you should bring it to, and it should be me you apply it to. Don't be applying something I said to the whole of people's internet radio. That clearly can't work, right? Um, we don't operate that way. We, you know, when the different guys come on, Nobody controls what we do or do not say on here. Everybody is free to say what they feel they need to say. There's just no other way of operating uh, an open internet radio platform like this. There's no way of doing it. And, um, you know, I'd like you to bear that in mind uh, all through the year that I'm not responsible for what anybody else has to say on here. I'm only responsible for what I say and my opinions. And I generally, in fact, regularly if i'm giving you my opinion i will say now the following is my opinion this is my opinion on something and that's just my opinion just like everyone else's opinion we all have one if i'm going to present you something that i say well it's factual you know in other words well it's written down in a little blue book like a constitution or chalmers and asquith or modern legal usage or something like that or a book on contract law 99 percent of the time i will tell you what book it is, where it was written, what page, what paragraph, etc. If I don't say it on the air, if you want to email me, admin at peoplesinternetradio.com, of course, we'd be happy to say, oh yeah, uh, if you give me the timestamp from, say, well, Vin in your podcast, that's so many minutes in, uh, so many hours, so many minutes, so many seconds in, you said the following. Can you give me your reference for that, please? I'd be more than happy to do so. But I will say this, as long as you're polite. We do get people sometimes, they get a bit uppity. I understand people can get upset about things, but I'm going to say something. If you're getting upset about something, folks, you're actually upsetting yourself. I'm not upsetting you. If I say something and you get upset, you're upsetting yourself. It's not me that's upsetting you. You have to recognise and acknowledge your own feelings and emotions. I recognise that. If something happens or somebody says something and I get upset, the key is in the phrase, I get upset. In other words, I'm choosing to get upset. That would be me choosing it. In other words, it's not your fault. So it's not my fault if you hear something on here or if I say some, something on here and you get upset. That's not my fault. So either it's correct or it's incorrect. If it's incorrect, by all means, we're open to correction. And if you're, you know, if you're a nice person, if you're a decent bloke or a nice woman and um, you actually are willing to, to, you know, to correct what we say and you can back it up with evidence, facts, etc., we're more than happy to take that on board. We always have been. We always have been. Um, <clears throat> there's no, I mean, it's pointless not to do it that way. It's absolutely pointless. I think this is important to say, and I'll tell you why. Uh, especially with, with when, say, when Billy comes on. I'll be calling Billy now shortly. And Billy and what he says about sovereignty, about the sovereign republic of Vera. And all of that. Billy is presenting his view. And he maintains absolutely that he can back it up with logic and reason and names and dates and times and who said what and when it happened. And it will be historically accurate. That's what Billy says. Now, we have had Billy, pardon me, we have had Billy Maguire on here for countless interviews down through the years. And some people have been you know, upset maybe with some of the information that Billy has presented or, or some of the suggestions he's made, etc. Now, I would say to all of you guys, where have you tried to interview Billy Maguire or where have you tried to call him to, you know, ask him to come on and do an interview with you? He has been more than willing to do so ever since I met him six years ago or so, uh, whenever it was, I'm not exactly sure, but it's about that, since I interviewed him, sorry, since I interviewed him first and I met him then, I think it was a year or so later. Um... 
But he will do it. I mean, if you are running an internet radio, or if you have a website and you have questions about this, by all means, phone Billy Maguire, record a conversation if you want. He doesn't have a problem with that. Record a conversation and talk to the man. There have been people who have uh, reacted badly, if you will, in the past. And I would say, well, and they've, they've gotten on to me as if somehow it's my fault. Well, it's not my fault, folks. Billy Maguire says what Billy Maguire says. And if he says it, you know, again, talk to him. He's more than willing to talk to him. I have given out Billy's home phone number on here numerous occasions. On numerous occasions. I don't know. Some people did take him up and I suppose others didn't. But the people who like to uh, complain and post things on the internet, etc., and to challenge things, they're very uh, reticent to do so. And I, I often wonder, why, why is that? You know, they'll post negative things or they'll say negative things about Billy Maguire, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, or what was going on. But they will never, or so far, so far, they don't seem to, um, they don't seem to want to actually have an actual open conversation with Billy about the issues. I'll give you a for example. <clears throat> if you go to Wikipedia and you type in Irish Republican Brotherhood, in fact, I'm going to do it right now. I'll do that right now just to show you. Uh, if you just Google Irish, and he spells it wrong, I -R -I <laughs> Irish Republican. Irish Republican Brotherhood, and you go to the Wikipedia link, and I'll give you the link here. I'll just drop it into the chat box for you, seeing as I'm in the chat box. And I'm putting this here for a very good reason. So if you look at that, you'll see, for example, if you scroll down to the bottom, in fact, right at the very top, it has, uh, where is it now? Basically, it's saying Irish Republican Brotherhood. Let's see. Well, in fact, okay, what they do here is they've mixed accurate information, if you will, with inaccurate information. Now, the important thing about Wikipedia, folks, is uh, anybody can join Wikipedia and anybody can make an entry. Now, I did join Wikipedia, as did many others, and we tried to correct the record, as it were, on this entry. And so far, everybody who's tried to make a correction has had their uh, a correct correction and to change some of the um, untrue, which we believe to be absolutely untrue, they have... Uh, been reverted back again uh, somebody else has changed them back this happens regularly however i'm going to read this the irish republican brotherhood uh, was a secret outbound fraternal organization now that phraseology secret outbound fraternal organization i don't think that's a very accurate description um it was certainly secret from the crown but it wasn't secret to the irish people it wasn't secret to us it was private, if you will, but it wasn't secret in that sense. Um, dedicated to the establishment of an independent democratic republic. Actually, it was an independent sovereign democratic republic. That's what's written in the proclamation three times. Sovereign, sovereignty, sovereign, right? It's in there three times. Um, in Ireland, between 1858 and 1924. Now, you see, they stop at 1924. And here's why. Whereas Billy McGuire would tell you there was no stoppage in 1924. Its counterpart in the United States of America was organized by John O'Mahony, that's correct, and became known as the Fenian Brotherhood, later Clan the Gael. Members of both its wings of the movement are often referred to as Fenians. The IRB played an important role in the history of Ireland as the chief advocate of republicanism during the campaign uh, for Ireland's independence from the United Kingdom. It wasn't quite from the United Kingdom, it was from the Crown the crown that's not the united kingdom didn't exist in that form as far as i'm aware right then back then maybe it did no i don't think it did anyway uh successor to movements such as the united irishman and the young islanders etc as part of the new departure of the 1870s to 1880s irb me members attempted to democratize the home rule league and its successors the irish Par parliamentary party as well as taking part in the land war um again some of that may be open to opinion from others, I don't know. The IRB staged the Easter Rising in 1916. A lot of people don't seem to realise that. A lot of people seem to think it was somebody else who staged the, uh, the Easter Rising. But again, I would say, look at the proclamation. It's written right there on the proclamation. Um, uh, which led to the establishment of the first, not the first, of... Dáil Éireann, 1919. The Dáil Éireann courts, the four courts, the Sovereign Republic of Éire. The suppression of Dáil Éireann precipitated 
the Irish War of Independence. Now, when they say the suppression of Dáil Éireann, what they are, to be accurate, they should have put the suppression of Dáil Éireann by the Crown and the Crown forces. Okay, a foreign uh, ruler, okay, who were usurping uh, our natural inalienable right to rule ourselves. They were foisting it upon us, essentially, uh, we the people at the time, okay. Now, I think it's very important also to recognise and to realise that uh, the men and women of 1916 who died and who were executed, in fact, they were executed, they were executed and the charge was treason to the Crown. That's why they were executed. And I'd like to put a call out in uh, the spirit of unity and friendship and uh, with regard to uh, the peace process and peace and reconciliation between all peoples that I would like to see would the Crown be willing to um, remove that charge of treason Because we are entering 2016, a very poignant and significant time in history for our Irish people, and yet that still I, that still hangs over our heads historically, if you will. That the leaders, these were the these were these men, were essentially the sovereign government established by the will of the we the people from the 32 county election of 1918. These, this was the sovereign government that was uh, executed, and they were executed for treason to the crown. They weren't executed as, um, you know, uh, well, they weren't executed for any other reason other than they claim it was treason against the crown. I think that should be undone, removed, obliterated, ablated, call it what you will. I think that should be undone. And in, as I say, in, in the interest of peace and reconciliation, because that is important, I think we have to learn to talk. The only way we can ever resolve any issue if you and I have an issue, the only way we can ever get resolution is we meet and we talk it out. If you hate me and I hate you and you can't stand me and I can't stand you, sooner or later, the only way we will ever come to peace uh, is if we meet and talk. And I, I must take on board your side and you must take on board my side. It's the only way forward. Uh, it's the only logical, sensible, reasonable way forward. If one side or the other refuses to do so, you, you end up at war. And I think only an insane man or woman would go to war because uh, all you're doing is committing other people's children to die horribly on a battlefield somewhere, maimed, death, destruction. And it's no way for humanity to continue. If humanity itself is to continue and if we are to move forward, I think this is the only way to do it. So I think that's, you know, I think that's, that would be a really good thing to happen this year if I'm, I'm not even I haven't even thought it through properly maybe for the correct language for this but somehow uh, that needs to be removed I don't know who uh, who agrees or disagrees with that sentiment on the chat box but I think that's right I think that's the right thing to do they should no longer uh, if you will be in um, in held in that limbo as it were so I mean, I know there's talk of Prince Charles. There was talk out there of maybe Prince Charles will be coming over to Ireland for 2016. Well, if Prince Charles comes, I think that would be... Uh, he would be welcomed if that was the news he was bringing, I think. I think everybody would welcome him as a guest in our, in our country, on our land. Not to come here as the, the son of the ruling crown, but to come here as a guest. I mean, after all, he's sovereign too. We, we are the ones, in fact, who recognise Prince Charles as a sovereign. We are the ones who recognise every man and woman on this land, and I mean the earth, as sovereign. In fact, it's only the crown who doesn't recognise everybody else's sovereignty, believe it or not. The crown structure, the British Empire, folks, it never went away. They just changed the name of different parts of it. So they operate as different, it's like different departments of, of one big company yeah the east indian company virginia company etc etc and that became well, america australia india so forth and so on that's how they did it they just the british empire never went anywhere it's still in place but only for the elites of that structure i mean even the the people the english people uh, they're being oppressed as much as anybody else and the reason they're being oppressed is because they're considered subjects subjects is just another word for slave 
And I think it's time that if the crown and the wearer of the crown and that whole crown structure, if they want to actually have their subjects, you see, how can the subject accept that you are the sovereign? How can the subject accept your sovereignty? Actually, they can't. If they themselves are not considered sovereign, how can a non-sovereign entity grant unto you, a sovereign entity, that recognition? They can't. The only people who can recognize and acknowledge the sovereignty of another are indeed sovereign people, other sovereign people. This is nothing to do with sovereign citizens or any of that stuff, right? This is just the idea of sovereignty as a uniqueness. You are a unique, singular entity, okay? There's only one of you. There's only one of me in here. There's only one of you in there, okay? We are all unique. Even identical twins are unique, folks. Triplets, quadruplets, they're all unique. They look the same, but they're not the same. We recognize that. Any sane man or woman on the planet recognizes that. And anybody who cannot recognize that, I would suggest they are either insane or they are lying to themselves. And if they are doing so, and if they are lying to themselves, and if they are therefore lying to others if they maintain that position, I would suggest they need to take some lessons in logic and truthfulness. Um, now, what's happening on January 21st? Many people have been asking about this. I too have been asking about this because I was unsure what was going on, what was happening, etc. There was, I saw a very nice poster that was designed. It's on somebody's Facebook page. I'd have to dig it up there to find it for you again. I will in a moment. Um, so what, what, what's, uh, and I'll, be, I'll have Billy on in a moment. So what, what's, um, what's organized or being arranged, or hopefully what's being arranged, is, and I think some, a lot of people who've been dedicated and been working very hard in the background for this to come about, is um, the Lord Mayor uh, for Dublin this year, um, God, I don't have her name off the top of my head. Very uh, Apologies, I'll dig it out. But um, she was a Sinn Féin, Lord Mayor anyway. And there's another chap called uh, uh, Bartle Darcy, who seemingly has been working in the background, trying to see if somehow or other, with some lines of communication open, if somehow um, this situation that has been happening down through the years, which clearly nobody is, is really happy with, uh, but if, if, if communication lines, if you will, can be opened and some negotiations and talks happen, and, you know, if, if we're prepared to listen to them and they'd be prepared to listen to us type of thing, uh, that improvements can happen. So it looks like that has happened. Some people in the background have been working on that. And I don't mean that in a nefarious way in the background. I mean, you know, they've been talking to each other privately. Privately. Not secretly. Privately. There's a difference, as we all know. So it looks like, um, I think it's Dublin City Council are possibly going to facilitate, I think is the correct term, the turning of the seal in the Mansion House in Dublin again. Uh, it will be the private session. as It's always been a private session, folks. Um, even right back in 1919, the first session of uh, the, 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 the sovereign government of the Sovereign Republic of Ireland at, was at noon in the Mansion House, in the Cabinet Room. That was the private session. And then the public session was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's always the way it's been done. Now, I know many of you have said, well, Billy has been uh, saying to people down through the years, yes, come and attend and view and see the turning of the sovereign seal, etc. Uh, absolutely. However, as I would say, it, it uh, has always been described as a private function. It is private. So invitations aren't, uh, for example, four million people. The whole country can't pile into that one room, right? That's just illogical. And they knew that too. That's why they had the public session in the large round room of the mansion house. So they said, right. Well, every dog and devil, if you will, can pile into the mansion house afterwards. And that's the idea is. So this year, the turning of the seal is going to happen in the mansion house. Uh, there's still some negotiations going on. I, I, again, I'll call Billy in in a moment. And um, then there will be uh, the public session will be 3 p.m. in Wynn's Hotel. Now, Wynn's Hotel, again, there's extraordinary historical significance around Wynn's Hotel, and I'm sure, I, you know, you, you guys could probably tell me more than I'd know about that. However, um, so that's, that's, I believe that's how it is at present. Maybe it'll change. I don't know. Um, but um, so it was, it was great to see, if you will, uh, that some of the Sinn Féin people uh, seem to think that this is a good thing. I saw Bartle Darcy uh, had a photograph of the tunnels which was ex exceptional to see, the tunnels under um, and around from Parnell Square, etc., on Parnell Street, on up to Vaughan's Hotel or whatever they were going. I'm not sure where they go. 
but which is what Billy Maguire has always maintained that the reason that the people from uh, the GPO were heading up Moore Street and through Moore, in fact, they were they had broken through all the buildings of Moore Street, is that they were heading to those tunnels to go down under the ground at Dublin and back up to pop up to escape. That was their escape route essentially, and seemingly it was denied that these tunnels existed for years and years. But lo and behold, there's a photograph of Bartle Darcy standing in one on his uh, Facebook page. So again. Uh, another thing Billy Maguire told us turns out to be absolutely true and correct. I'm going to try and call Billy in now, folks. Give me a few minutes. I, I will put a tune on for you. And um, Oh, yes. Sorry. So I won't take calls for the first um, hour or so of Billy on. And I don't think Billy will be able to stay with me too long. But uh, at, the, at near the end, if Billy agrees to take a call on, if you really want to make a call, by all means, 0144 Write that number down. 0144 or, of course, you can call in over Skype. You'd have to add me as a contact. Uh, V-I-N-C-E-N-T-T-E-M-P and the digit 1, Vincent Temp 1. And I would hope that anybody who does call in keeps it cordial and civil, civilised. Let's have some civil discourse here, folks. Um, by all means, if you disagree, there's, there's no problem if you call in and you want to disagree. Uh, uh, and nobody has a problem with that, as I say, as long as you're polite and you're not rude. We have no problem with that. And if you disagree on a point, well, that's okay. That can be talked about and it can be, you know, it can be worked out, as they say, over time. Calm, calm, steady heads. That's what we need, I think. Um, let, let's make 1916 be remembered in 2016 as a year that we went to peace and that we successfully achieved what we as a people want to achieve in peace and harmony. I mean, why is that wrong? You know, let's not... Going to war, folks... I'm going to tell you, going to war is an impossibility nowadays. It's impossible. It will not work. It cannot work. It's illogical. It, it only leads to, well, we've seen what it leads to. It's no, no way to live, in my opinion. Okay, I'm going to try and call Billy in there now. I'll, uh, I'll put a quick tune on for you, folks. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. It's ringing now. It's a little loud, actually. That should be a little better now. Hello? Hi, Billy, can you hear me? Hi, Vincent, how are you? Excellent, excellent. We're live on the radio at the moment. Oh. Excellent. Can so, you a little louder, Vincent? Oh, you want me a little louder? Okay, hold on. Yeah. How's that there now? Is that any better for you? Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, excellent. Well, welcome again uh, back to People's Internet Radio, Billy. And, um, of course, as always, uh, we're always delighted to speak to you. And I was making a point there. I don't know if you could hear me earlier on. No, uh, I can't, your computers. Vincent, because they cut off my broadband. Yeah, that, yeah. And I, I haven't had any broadband for, for such a long time. I haven't even been able to listen to you except on the, on Over the, the telephone. Phone, yeah. But anyway, I'd like to say good evening to all your listeners well, well, before and to you, you and wish them all Thank a you. very happy new year. It's a very important it year. 2016, the hundredth anniversary of the revolution, as they call it. Well, the first thing I wanted to ask you, Billy, if you don't mind, I've about three or four different separate kind of issues I want to go through with right. you, if that's okay. So the first one is, um, I would like you to clearly, unequivocally state that you are more than willing to be interviewed by anybody out there who's willing to interview you by any media. Uh, isn't that correct? Oh, yes, Absolutely. Okay. I mean, look, it's not Billy Maguire's importance. It's the Irish Republican Brotherhood and the Fenian Republican Brotherhood, you know, who funded and founded the state, and we're just airbrushed out of everything. And and how can you make a, a, a valid judgment on anything if you don't have the facts? And as we do, Vincent, we're not a political party, as you know. We no. just give the facts. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I mean, and in fairness, you know, I think a lot of people need to uh, take that on board, Billy, that... As you say, you are not the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and your position is a non-political. It's apolitical. You're not part Absolutely. of politics. Absolutely. And the Irish Republican Brotherhood, they abhor war, they abhor violence, corruption, maladministration, propaganda, lies, and deception. Sovereign citizens don't live like that. You know, you have to be upfront with, with uh, our, our citizens and, and with our people. And I think, you know, people don't understand that. I mean, uh, I was looking there at, you know, they were talking about William Butler Yeats 
and, and Sligo and all that, and I was listening about, you know, great grand... William Butler Yates is a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And, right. and you, you know, and I heard them talking about putting the coinage on the... On the uh, they called it the harp, because we know it's the sovereign seal and, and uh, 14 strings on the money. And uh, he did it because he was a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. I think people should understand that, you know. They were just being fed all this lies and deception all the time, and I abhor that, you know. Well, okay, so the, we grew up. The, 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 the three things really I wanted to discuss. First of all, I wanted to get it clear out there that you're willing, if somebody else is listening, because we, we, we get so, told, Billy, you know, oh, you guys are the only people who interview Billy Maguire. And I, I say, that's not true. <laughs> Billy Maguire will do an interview with anybody. In fact, I've given out your home phone number here many times over the airways. Yeah. I've said to people, there's Billy's phone number. Go ahead, call him. He'll talk to you. Yeah, but as you know, Vincent, over the years, you know, RT, uh, uh, you know, the National Broadcast and that, they, they have refused to even mention the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the Fenian uh, Republican Brotherhood. Yeah. And they don't mention our proclamation or the sovereign constitution and, and uh, the sovereign seals and so We never mentioned. We're airbrushed out of everything. Yeah. And I'm amazed. Well, uh, 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 what I was really pointing to, though, Billy, is other, uh, other internet radios, even such as we are operating, that you are absolutely willing to go on and do interviews with absolutely, them. Absolutely, Vincent. We have, nothing, we have nothing to hide. We only give out the facts the way, the best way, the way we can. And yeah. you either agree with them or you don't. You either have sovereignty exactly. or you don't have it. And those, that's what those 1916 was all about. Going out, those volunteers gave their lives. They carried the sovereign seeds, eight springs, IV, Irish volunteers. Uh, and, and those Irish volunteers, they were all founders. And the Citizens Army. Uh, and Common Amman and Inina Heron and, and all those. Uh, um, they were all, uh, they're all Irish Republican Brotherhood. The backbone is the GEA. That's their organization. You know, Sinn Féin is the political wing of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's the mandate we have, and we hold the 32-county election of 1918 from Vaughan Sotel and ratified on the 21st of January 1919 by the will of all the citizens of the era. And, now, and that's what we hold, and we still hold that mandate today. And again, and, Billy, I, th I think this is very important for people to understand and to comprehend that on the internet there's a wikipedia page on the internet which as i say can be edited by anyone although it seems if anybody who seems to actually know what went on tries to edit their edits will be uh, deleted and in the wikipedia page uh, i've seen a lot of people quote this that they say the irb subsequently dissolved itself although it is not known whether a formal decision was taken or it simply ceased to function now, nowhere does that say, essentially, that the IRB was ever dissolved. There's, what they're saying there is they don't know. So I would like you to absolutely well, and unequivocally you, the Republican claim... Brotherhood, the Fenian Republican Brotherhood were never dissolved by anybody. Right. And it's, if you read the proclamation, that's our proclamation. Of course, nobody ever refers to that as the Irish Republican Brotherhood's proclamation. And, and that's a scandal. And that happened all during the... the in, from the 6th of, of December 1921... When uh, uh, under under the the um, you know the signing of that illegal and fraudulent agreement that was imposed by King George V uh, as a British apartheid system for the 26 and six counties of Ireland as an orange free state and a provisional government, and uh, some of the members of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, they did. Collins had to step down to sign that illegal agreement and give his allegiance to the Crown of England. And as a consequence of that, um, Mulcahy, uh, he, he tried to get to take the sovereignty uh, uh, for that group of, of, of betrayers who, who, who committed uh, treason. And, and he, Michael Collins, had to, Michael Collins on the 21st of January 1919 was minister for, for finance. On the, the 6th of December 1921, Michael Collins had to step down from the Irish Republican Brotherhood to sign that illegal uh, agreement, and he was only provisional minister uh, for uh, uh, finance. And that's the difference. You can, we don't have a sovereign government, although Andy Kenny was talking about a sovereign government, and, and he certainly uh, he doesn't recognize the Irish Republican Brotherhood or the Fenian Brotherhood or the sovereignty of the state. He only recognizes uh, what... The, the British apartheid system that was imposed 
by King George V on the 6th of December 1921. Now, now on that point, Billy, I mean, I've posted it up here. What I did was, before I knew you were coming on tonight, of course, and before uh, you were coming on, I went through some of the old images and posters I'd put up on Facebook uh, right. over the last year that would relate to this. And for example, I have maintained all along, and I know you agree with me, that it's impossible, it's absolutely impossible for what's referred to as the Anglo-Irish Treaty to be a legitimate treaty under international law for the following reason, that the Crown, or the people who are on the side of the Crown, did not recognise that those individuals called, the, they refer to them as the Irish delegation, but they were not referred to or considered to be from a sovereign government. Therefore, the Crown still refer to them as subjects. Now, I made the point before you come on that the, the, the people who are executed, the, the 1916 leaders who are executed, um, that in this year, 2016, that if Prince Charles, for example, and I hear there's talk of Prince Charles maybe coming to Ireland as a guest, I would like to think that he might bring over good news that that charge of treason be lifted on yes. those men. I think that would be a very nice gesture. I You're think he, absolutely right, Vincent, yeah. because on the 20... See, people don't seem to realize that the, all the 1916, that was all about sovereignty and the proclamation and the sovereign constitution, now the foundation documents of the state. That's what they gave their lives for. And they carried eight strings, IV, Irish volunteers. And that became 12 strings that's on your passport and mm -hmm. makes everything legal, valid, and bona fides. Yeah. That is the name of the state, is the Sovereign Republic of Era. And, and Dáil Éireann is the sovereign uh, uh, republic of Ireland. Uh, that's their sovereign government of the 21st of January 1919. But King George V, in, in uh, August of 1919, declared the, the sovereign republic of Ireland and, and the sovereign republic of Ireland's Dáil Éireann government to be an illegal assembly. So how could you do uh, what you're talking about? How can you do a treaty with an illegal assembly? Now, not only that, what I'm going to put on the screen here for everybody to see, I have it here on the screen here now. Uh, if you're not on the screen, don't worry, I'll read it out to you. And this is uh, from uh, Chalmers and Asquith, uh, Outlines of Constitutional Law, which is printed back in the 90, early 1920s or thereabouts, and has royal legislation. The laws made by the king went by various names. There were one, charters, or quasi-treaties made between a king and people. And I highlighted that because a quasi-treaty, when you place quasi before a word, it essentially weasels out the meaning of the word following it. And in um, modern legal usage, you can see there on the screen as well, quasi-contract, quasi-contract, contract implied in law. The terms are now regarded as synonymous in referring to not a, to a contract, at all, but to the function necessary to promote justice by preventing unjust enrichment, blah, blah, blah. If you read on down through it, you'll see um, uh, what has been called quasi-contract, where was it gone? Uh, no, I lost it now, it was not in that one. Sorry, it was <laughs> there was another one. But essentially what it's saying there is that a quasi-contract is no contract at all. And a quasi-treaty is the only uh, accurate description one could possibly give for what happened in uh, uh, with, the, with the so-called Anglo-Irish uh, treaty. It can't possibly be a treaty. It's well, only. There was never a treaty signed. No, it can't no, be a treaty. Because the sovereign government has never sat in Leinster House. This is where everybody keeps making the, the, the assumption. You can't make an assumption for something that didn't happen. And, I mean, you have to be factually correct. Don't err and sat. Uh, 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 by the will of all the people, and that's the mandate we have, and that's the mandate we implemented on the 21st of January 1919 in GHQ Vaughan's Hotel, and uh, by the executive of the Supreme Council of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and in in the cabinet room in the Mansion House, by, uh, 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 and by by the cabinet, and by the Sovereign Republic of Ireland's daughter and government in the Round Room. And that's the mandate that we have, and now, that's the sovereignty. Now, what I've also put on screen here as well, Billy, is this was a letter. Uh, and if you look at the top of it, everybody else will be able to see this, Billy, sorry, just so you know. You'll see up the top of this letter, and this was in relation to, there's a link there, the, jour the journal.ie letter, Tume, Mother and Baby Home. This was to do with that scandal that happened with the babies. But you'll see that air is at the top. 
and uh, or, sorry, pardon me, just a sovereign seal at the top, and the word air is underneath it, and it's dated 19, uh, I think it's 1956, 1956, and there is air underneath the, the sovereign seal. It has seal. to have air on it, because if it hasn't air, and this is what they're lacking today, you, if the name of the state is the Sovereign Republic of Era, there was no other state founded or funded in Era, and it was founded and funded excuse me, by the Irish Republican Brotherhood and the Fenian Republican Brotherhood. That's who funded and founded the state. And the name of the state is the Sovereign Republic of Era, and that's what King George V he couldn't accept and wouldn't accept. Uh, and you see, there's, you have to go back even further than that. You know the famous yeah. Holocaust where they took everything out that caused this, uh, the famous famine. But you see, the crown of England is, is that is, she is, that's royalty. And I've said it many times in your show. Royalty is pomp and ceremony. The crown of England depends on the harp. The harp is the covenant between God and man with all the information knowledge for his planet Earth and our civilization. It's the first computer known to mankind. And, and those first four strings, earth, air, fire, and water, and how man learned to write, how man learned to count. It's all about your being, and it's all about planet Earth and how we live our civilization in planet Earth and that we don't destroy it. And the crown of England depends on, you see it up in her coat of arms, she depends on the harp for sovereignty. The crowns of, of, of any crown, and the crown of England especially, depends on the harp for their sovereignty. And you see, and I, all I, I was making... knowledge uh, for, 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 uh, her, the, for planet Earth, those four strings. And that is what... It's all about. I, I was making and the point earlier, Billy, that. It's so <coughs> important that we understand how men learn to write. Uh, mm. The Crown sovereignty is the very same sovereignty as every other child because the Irish Republican Absolutely. Brotherhood and the Fenian Brotherhood, they believe that every child is born sovereign and has a sovereign right to education, to the four elements earth, air, fire, and water, to education, hospital care, and the assets of the state. And I would further say that's why I ask. You know, all these countries and, and all these corporations and all this. Uh, where is your sovereignty? You, you know, today I asked it today from a guard of Chicago. He didn't know what I was talking about. He, he couldn't show it to me. And, and uh, you, you, you would have to ask. The sovereignty is everything. If you don't have sovereignty, and as you know, General de Gaulle wouldn't allow uh, Ireland to join the well, it was the common market in those days, because we only had a provisional government since the 6th of December, uh, 1921. And we, we, we only got in when, when, because Britain wanted to join, the, it was the common market at the time, and we got in under Britain's court sales. But you know, the, the biggest crisis coming down the road is when David Cameron, he, 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 he asked the people of the United Kingdom to vote which, whether they're going to leave the European Union or not. What position is it? Why, and why has our provisional government, their heads in their sand, uh, ask, ask, what's going to happen to us? Uh, we have a sovereign government that the provisional government here does not recognise. And that's the point I'm making. Well, I, I, here's <coughs> another one then, Billy. I have this, I've got, again, people will be able to read this on the screen. Uh, Constitution of Ireland, Perspectives and Prospects. Eamon de Valera which he delivered at Arbor Hill during Easter week 1933, where he emphasised the sovereignty of the Irish people and hinted at constitutional change. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom there, folks, everybody will be able to see this as well. Uh, he said, an advanced constitutional conceptualization capable of facilitating a sovereign republic. Now, I mean, of course, you know, you, you, uh, I, I know what you'd say about that, Billy, uh, but um, Well, even as you know, we have five constitutions, right. but the only legal, valid and bona fide is one is the first sovereign constitution by the will of all the citizens of ERA in the 1918-32 county election. And if you want me to, to I, can, I can bring out that about um, De Valera's 37 constitution, where he leaves out um, he leaves out from Article 4 and 5, I'm just looking at it here for you, and I'll read it out to you. And this is De Valera's 37. As well, you know, just, we just, just before you do that, Billy, says, just, just before you do that, I'm going to read something from 
Enda Kenny, folks. This was from Enda Kenny. I have it on screen there. Looking to 2016, how stands the Republic? This was July 28th, 2013. This is the words of Enda Kenny when he was in the McGill Summer School, and he said the following. In a few short months, Ireland will be the first Eurozone country to successfully emerge from a bailout programme. Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, that will be an important moment for our country for many reasons. And here's the bit I want you to focus on. Not least because to be a real republic, Ireland must be a sovereign republic. They're the words of Enda Kenny, Billy, in 28th of July, 2013. Yes, but it's amazing, Vincent, that he doesn't recognise that. And he doesn't recognise the Irish Republican Brotherhood or the Fenian Brotherhood who, who, who founded and funded the state. Well, this the is what a, this, Republic of Ireland. You see, this is the problem where we're saying they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth, as it were. Both sides. Yeah. So would you want to read that, what you were going to read I first, do, please? I do, I do, because this is Devilers. First of all, you have the sovereign constitution. Then you have, uh, uh, you have the free state constitution uh, in the Shelburne Hotel uh, imposed by King George V. Then you have De Valera's 37, then you have the British Constitution, and, and you have the European Constitution. Is that five? But anyway, he, here we have Bun Rutnahir and De Valera's 37 Constitution, which we're all supposed to love. And the state, he says, Article 4. The name of the state is, De Valera says, the name of the state is Era, or in the English language, Ireland. That is wrong. No. Correct. The name of the state is the Sovereign Republic of Era. Yes. He leaves out the Great Republic and leaves out Republic. And Article 5, Ireland is a sovereign, independent, democratic state. Mm -hmm. Ireland is a sovereign, republic, independent, Correct. democratic state. And that's because he was colluding with the British, and they wouldn't align within republic. That's what it comes from. Now I've and put you another can go one. further down to Article 20, if you want to go down, sure. and see that all money matters must uh, initiate from Dolan. Dolan has never sat in Leinster House. And what are they talking? It's time that the truth was told to the people. And, and to, we would have a wonderful country. Even more so, Billy. I, I mean, I've put another one. I put another one there on, on, on this. January 1919, but our politicians won't recognise it. Exactly. I've put another one on screen there, again, from Enda Kenny. This was Thursday, June the 13th, 2013. And by Mary Regan, political correspondent, and this was Kenny sends a strong message to the church to butt out. And in that, apparently, he's been quoted as saying, uh, Enda Kenny is aware that while faith is personally important to the majority of Irish people, as he points out, it is for him. Well, that remains to be seen. He says there is no longer a tolerance for the church hierarchy dictating sovereign law. And yet he seems to think he can dictate sovereign law, Billy. How does he figure that one? Uh, well, I mean, he just does not recognize the the sovereignty of the state. He only recognizes uh, uh, King George V mm -hmm. and what he imposed in the 6th of December 1921. And there are the facts. And look, you can't be talking. And if, the, if in Europe you have to have a sovereign government, we have a sovereign government, and Enda Kenny does not recognize that sovereign government. I really do feel in a fall. Uh, or Fine Gael, or Labour, they don't recognise the sovereign government. Now, we also have to say that Sinn Féin is the political wing of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. They're the ones that won the 1918-32 county election. But that, they're all split into all different groups, and they don't even recognise the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Well, that's why I'm thinking that wouldn't it be great this year for the 21st of January if that can be the beginning of, uh, you know... Um a, a, a nice way for people to come together and to realise that, first and foremost, if you don't have sovereignty, you can't have anything else. I mean, I've often no. said to people, Billy, if, if, you ha if you live next door to me and if you need to call me and get my permission to paint your kitchen a different colour, you can't say you're living a free life. And that's essentially no. what it is. If you don't have sovereignty first to make your own determinations. Well, what's happening, Vincent, that all the assets of the state, of the sovereign republic of air, are all being robbed. Yeah. And we talk about, you know, the, the Holocaust and that very good book uh, that w w was written by Chris, Chris Fogarty. Yeah, and what happened was, there was plenty of food here, but the Crown forces took all the food. Yeah. And we were left with rotten potatoes. And they, they, you have to go back and find out the reasons for all these things happened. And we're talking about 1916. And can I mention that, you, you, you know, we're not being told the truth. And, and you can't understand 1916 
and, and what happened until you go back to 1912 when Sir Edward Carson founded the Ulster Volunteers. And in 1913, Guinnesses gave 100,000, Lord Rothschild gave 100,000, to Rupert Kipling gave 50,000 to buy the top-class German guns to arm them. And the Crown of England and the RIC did nothing, and they colluded with that. And as a consequence, the intelligence officers of the Irish Republican Brotherhood reported to the Supreme Council, uh, the executive of the Irish Republic, what had happened. And the, and the executive of the Supreme Council of the Irish Republican Brotherhood they founded the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizens Army as a defence force. And Owen McNeil was only fronting for the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and James Connolly was only fronting for the Citizens Army. And as a defence force, that's when you must understand that we were going to be wiped out. And in 1913, uh, 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 that was, that, they, they were founded in the Rotunda, as you know, and... and um, we're going up there. We'll talk about that later on. Okay. And and uh, then my granduncle Tom and Sam McGuire, who was secretary of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, they, Sam was sent to the post office in London to collect the intelligence on the Crown forces, and and Tom was sent to Calcutta in India. And they brought those uh, uh, intelligence to uh, Vaughan's Hotel every week. We only, the Irish Republican Brotherhood had only a room in, in Vaughan's Hotel for Mrs. Vaughan at the time. And uh, but anyway, in 1914, uh, the 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 UVF that became the UVF Army, they declared war on Britain and Ireland if Home Rule was imposed on by the British government in Ireland. And the British government capitulated to the UVF army because Germany would have wiped out Britain if they had. And, and it, look, and you see that thing that I said about uh, King George V on the 6th of December 1921 when he imposed that under the threat of immediate and terrible war. And they had every intention on the 21st, uh, on the 6th of December 19, uh, uh, 1921, of, of carrying out immediate and terrible war on our people. And that is what... And, and how can you... You said uh, about signing treaties and about signing agreements and that. How can you sign an agreement under that? If you're signing an agreement... I mean, look, there's no contract that's ever considered valid if somebody has a gun to their head, Billy. Well, that's what they had, guns yeah, to their head. Absolutely. Uh, now, on top and, of and that... And it's there in black and white. And it isn't yeah. from... I'm just Billy Maguire the same. It. No. It's, the, it's the facts. And why don't we go back to that and sort out these... Look, the Queen came here, and it was a very successful visit for the Queen. But it was predicated on a true commission coming out. Mm. And as you know, I live down where the University of Limerick uh, is now, and, the Limerick, and, and that university was given all the Vaughan Sotel papers. And, you know, and, and those Vaughan Sotel papers are now... They they don't know what they did with them. I think they do and, know. Uh, uh, and uh, but anyway. Um, well, again, what I what I have on screen there again, Billy. A lot of people think, oh, somehow this was fixed in 1937, and I want to reiterate and prove to you that it was not fixed in 1937. No, on screen there, never. people can see a copy of the New York Times, first of May, 1937, and I'm going to have to put my glasses on. I think to read this, and it says. Um, in effect, create a de jure independent state for all Ireland with a de facto, that means not real, yeah. de facto sovereign state, and it can't yeah. be a sovereign state, de facto state for 26 counties. That's all that the 1937 constitution set up, was a de facto provisional government, Billy. Isn't that correct? That's right. It can't be anything else, can it? No. And the point about it is, what I'm saying is, that's why we have to have a sovereign government, because the assets of the state must be invested in our citizens. You know, for education, hospital care, uh, uh, you know, all our roads are transferred, draining the, the River Shannon now, which we have to do. Yeah. And, and people should live, uh, you know, sovereigns, that's how they live, proper lives. And that's not happened because all these people and corporations and that are walking off with all the assets of the state and there's no accountability for anybody. And it's just, it seems to me the politicians are bought off. We saw that program there recently uh, uh, where politicians were bought off. And that's how things are happening under the eyes of the people. And the citizens should ask and should, they should be made and held accountable. 
And that's what a sovereign government is all about. And again there, I've just put on uh, screen about the, the tricolour flag that there's no mention of a gold fringe on the tricolour flag. That's Are you disgrace. First? I mean, that really... And, and you saw, I don't know whether you saw it on, on, on New Year's Day, and uh, that's... Um, our three flags, those three flags are Irish Republican Brotherhood flags. When uh, Thomas Francis Marr brought that flag over here uh, in, in uh, 1848, and it became, uh, you know, the Athenians were around, and so were the Young Irelanders and that, and they became the Irish Republican Brotherhood and Fenian Republican Brotherhood. They're the sister organization. James Stevens founded the Irish Republican Brotherhood down at 60 Number Street on St. Patrick's Day. 1858, and John O'Mahony founded it in Dohanese in New York on the same day. That's why we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And and they, they adopt um, uh, John Francis Ma, Thomas Francis Ma, he, he became, uh, uh, you know, he was a, a Fenian, but he was also a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And they adopted that flag, the tricolour flag, as the national flag. And as you, you, you and I, we've had discussions on that. It came with the orange nearest to the pole and, and was ratified on the 21st of January 1919 with the green nearest to the pole. I, st- I still get people saying to me, Billy, Vin, <laughs> I still get people saying to me that I was holding the tricolour backwards that time yeah. outside the GPO. <laughs> I was trying to get that all the And time. I wasn't, folks. But the point I wasn't. is, that's how... Look, I knew Hayes McCoy very well and he used to come to Willowbank and I used to go up and collect and get all those boxes. By the way, too, um, <clears throat> as you know, all the... My father moved from the from Vaughan's Hotel. All the, the boxes of memorabilia, and you know uh, the Chalbert printing press and Collins bicycle and all that. And they were in the offices down in Francis Street in Limerick. Mm-hmm. Over the the, the offices, uh, there was a huge collection which was known as the Sack Store. And my father, at some stage, he brought them all out to Woodbank, where we lived, which is now part of the university. And there were the uh, the carpenter there was was Billy Maloney. And he, he secured the, you know, there were two, um, what you call them, in, uh, was, uh, in the house, you know. You had the, the, it was a double, a double, what a ch- cheapy a carpenter would call a double hip roof. Yeah, there were two, there were two of those yeah. on, up on the attic, and uh, two attics, huge attics, as you can see, you have photographed that house. And uh, the, my father put up all the, the papers, uh, well, there's, there's a lot of them up there, ones that wouldn't be used all the time. And mm. a lot of them were kept, the child, the printing press was kept, I told you, at the back door, what was known as the butler's pantry, and, and guns as bicycle and all that sort of cannonballs. And a lot of the old guns were up under the, you know, in the attics. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> to make a long story short, I was, what was I going to do with those? And uh, I remember Colonel Duggan at, at the time, uh, and, uh, you know, this, this history, military history at the time, and he wouldn't hear of, of, of me giving that to them because he said De Valera was sanitizing and they were rewriting uh, all, a lot of those documents, and I believe yeah. that's true. And anyway, they were given to the university, that house, because well, that university is an Irish Republic. How long? How long was that going on for, Billy, do you think? How long was De Valera doing that sanitization, do oh, you think? Oh, from the very start. Right. I, I just put you another see, one. when he went to America, people don't realise, in right. 1919, and when he saw, and he went, because James McGuire was chairman of Friends of Irish Freedom in America, they collected all that money. Mm-hmm. You know, all, all that money was up for... Uh, for uh, you know, Dolair and, and the institutions, they were all up and working on the 21st of January 1919. Absolutely. And, um, and nobody and disputes that. saw the that. huge crowds of people, that were, all Irish people and all these people supporting him. That's when he got the, the idea that he was going to take over and he was going to found Fianna Fáil. And, and that money was misappropriated by De Valera and afterwards by uh, Michael Collins and by the Common Gael government who set up Fianna Gael out of it. Yeah. And they're still And again, Billy, I think it's important that we, we point out at this stage that again you're not having a crack at anybody here. You actually admire a lot of the men from back then, even if you oh, don't like I what do they did. But you, yeah. well, uh, what I'm saying is what I'm do- we're a hundred years on and we haven't exactly. we have where's the sovereignty? And what's going to happen when the crown of, of England uh, uh, who depends on the harp and if you noticed in, in the PNSI the, they they put the, the sovereign seal opposite the crown and made it equal. Yeah. But in, in, in the coat of arms of the Crown of England, it is the harp 
And the harp is the covenant between God and man. I keep on repeating that all the time. And the crown of sovereignty comes from the harp. And yeah. the America depend on uh, on the crown of England for sovereignty. And because the, the crown still regards America as subjects to the crown. Absolutely. And they depend on... See, that's what people and don't in, understand. In fact, Billy, there's, there's a load of... Uh, there's a load he of, depended on the harp for his sovereignty. Absolutely. There's, there's a load of radio shows across the internet from America, guys, and you can listen to them, and they all keep saying to all the American people that the crown is still operating in charge. It does. It of does. America. It still regards the yeah. American people as subjects, yeah. and America is going off to war in all these countries yeah. under the sovereignty of, they say, the crown. Which mm. The crown is under, hasn't any sovereignty at all. The, the crown is royalty, and that's propaganda. Well, I, so I would make the argument, is, Billy. Is, is, is pomp and ceremony. In fact, I but made the argument earlier. How you conduct and how you look after planet Earth and how you look after your being, yourself. Well, isn't it like this, Billy? Doesn't logic and reason dictate that I can't possibly be sovereign if I don't recognise the sovereignty of others? And the no, crown, essentially, that's what the crown is saying. So the crown, in my opinion, by not accepting the sovereignty of others, they're actually denying their own sovereignty. I've not learned that, but, you know, as I said it earlier, that, you, you know, that the Queen's visit was predicated on a truth commission going back to 1912, yeah. you know, about where did they get, where, who gave all that mo money to buy the top-class uh, uh, German guns for the UVF army? And who capitulated? That must all come out. Right. And did it happen? Not at all. And you know the peace, reconciliation, and prosperity process, which the University of Limerick, it, it was founded in 1950, that peace, reconciliation, because my father was the one behind it. There was a lot of great people behind that. And it's now been scrapped, the whole thing. Yeah. Because that money that was given, that, that Chuck Feeney was giving five uh, million pounds, uh, uh, five million euros at the time, to buy Vaughan's Hotel, and, and he was going to extend uh, Willowbank uh, for the peace, reconciliation, and prosperity process for the world where conflicts would be there. And that money was uh, because I know from, from uh, Hugh Coveney, who I was, I was quite close, worked closely with Hugh Coveney, right up to, I think, it was roughly the week before he died. Uh, and the letter that he. And just wrote, so people uh, know, Billy, that's, that's uh, Simon Coveney, is his son. Yes, he is. And he doesn't recognize the Irish Republican Brotherhood either. No. But, but Hugh Coveney did. And Hugh Coveney told me that that money was misappropriated by Fine Gael for their own purposes. Instead of buying Vaughan's Hotel, as the money was, was put up, that Brendan O'Regan told me he went to Chuck Feeney at the time, because he, he was the one who talked Chuck Feeney all about uh, um, uh, free, uh, uh, duty free. And and he was very, and Chuck Feeney had agreed to buy Vaughan's Hotel and had his office in one of the buildings, as you know, it's 29 Parnell Square in Granby mm. Row, and uh, he was going to to um, you know Willowbank, who probably wouldn't be big enough. It was a big house and that, and beautiful gardens and and surroundings right on the River Shannon, and uh, but they were going to he was going to build and then the all oh, this was done, uh, and uh, what did they do? Okay, they at the end. Uh, uh, Fine Gael uh, were in government with Labour at the time and um, they got it with a bank and it's there, you can see the grounds, you can see the places there but they got, and th that Tom Connors told me who, who he said that, they, they, that uh, the house wasn't big enough for the peace and reconciliation and prosperity process and it was Tom O'Donnell that was in charge because Brendan O'Regan wasn't in charge at that stage and I asked Tom, he, he, he asked Tom, what did you do with all the Vaughan's Hotel papers and memorabilia and all the guns and uh, cannonballs and all the swords and things that were there? And he won't tell anybody. Wow. And, and uh, that, that Tom told me, Tom O'Connor, who took, got the contract to take down the building, and he was told it wasn't big enough. He told me that three furniture, you know, those big furniture van loads of, of all the documents, all the names of all the uh, uh, members of the Irish Republican, but all the plans for the rising, the plans for Oglin the Heron's plan the, from the escape from the GPO up to Moore Street and uh, in, in the rotunda.
the, all these tunnels were down the rotunda. And I've been saying it to historians for years, and they all say, oh, the man that Billy McGuire is mad. There's no tunnels. Those tunnels led up to Vaughan's Hotel. And that was the escape plan for all those volunteers in Citizens' Army. They would go, and as you know, Moore Street, it's just across the road. Of course. It's only a few yards. Of course. Well, uh, they were heading up there for a reason, Billy. Clearly, sorry, clearly they were heading uh, up there sorry. for a reason. I mean, there was no sorry. way they were heading up there. I'd just also like to throw in here, I have a little one on the screen there, Bilderberg Club. Uh, Simon Coveney uh, has been at the Bilderberg Conference, along with Peter Sutherland, and I believe Noonan, uh, in fact, I think Noonan has gone again. Um, you know, this, this, there's, there's very strange things happening at this Bilderberg uh, meeting, uh, Billy. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Uh, the I high and the mighty. I don't know much about them now, to be honest. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't. I don't. I just do sovereignty and the legitimacy of the state, as you know. I don't do anything else. And I keep it to that very simply. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, as you know, I'm the last member left of the Supreme Council of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And it does worry me. You know, we have a very nice committee, all working very hard. And I must congratulate Christina and, and, and Harry and, you know, Robert and, and, and um, Darren and, and uh, you know, Mick and, and um, Michael. And, you know, we have so many people and Tom and all those and, and, and Tom Ryan. And, and uh, you know, and who work very hard. And they only, we only do it for voluntary. We don't have any money, as you know. Absolutely. But we keep the sovereignty, the legitimacy of the state alive. And again... Now, if, 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 what's going to happen when, when Britain pull out of the, of the European Union? We have a sovereign government. Well, see, this and is it, that, um, it, th- this was, that was part of the question about the six counties, that if Britain did, if, if the, you know, if Britain did pull out, what would happen to the so-called six counties? And it was put out there that they would remain in, thereby keeping Ireland in, because that is the connection that Ireland, essentially, as it stands under the 26-county provisional government structure, uh, they're being held in, in the EU via the connection with the Crown. That's exactly, that's how, they're, that's how we're in Europe. Yeah. We're not in there as a sovereign government. No. But the point is... What is, what, are Europe, all these other European countries going to say, look, Ireland, give back all that money you've got from us? I mean, look at all the roads they built. Yeah. You, know, you can say you criticise them as much as you like, but we never got anything from Britain or anybody else. Yeah. We got what we got, what we paid well for it. Well, you I think, again, even Europe, I mean, Europe... <laughs> taking all the... <laughs> the European all system. in this country, and Chris Fogarty is right about the Holocaust... Always the trouble in this country is that these people, I mean, the Crown forces couldn't operate without Ireland. No. And Ireland paid a huge price in all that food that was taken out, and that's what caused the famine. Today, look at the gas being taken out. And wh- I would like to see that that com- corporation's license, Vincent. Uh, Again, it, I, I have one on the screen here for Irish Water as well. Irish Water don't have a license. Where do they have their license from? Yeah. Where are they getting their license? The only one that can issue a license is the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Mm. And, and that's what we'll be doing. All licenses are legal and valid and bona fides from the 21st of January to the 20th of January each and every year, where they revert back to the sovereign citizens of the sovereign Republic of Era and the sovereign government of of the sovereign Republic of Era, Dáil Éireann. That's the sovereign government, not this doll, the royal doll, and, no. and the royal Oireachtas that was imposed by King George V. They're the only ones that ever vote for anything. And why is it, what is going to happen? And why can't we sort that out now, rather than this awful crisis that people went through, they lost their houses over the banking crisis because people were robbing it off. I saw the IFA robbing the assets of the, uh, uh, of the state. You, 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 everybody seems to think they can rob what they like here and get away with it. And I say you can't. You have to account no matter Soon, who you Sooner are. or later, if Billy. I mean, it's like this. It's like the way I see it, rather, is this is my opinion, is that the people who are alive now, I mean, I know if people now say, oh, Vin, look, what the hell does all that have to do with me? That was 100 years ago. And I say, well, technically you're correct that it doesn't really directly have anything to do with you. I say, however... Um, you're alive now, and you're alive now living in and under an oppressive regime that was put in place by people who had a certain mindset. Their mindset was that you are essentially a subject less than, somehow less than, the ruling, and I'm going to call them what they are, the ruling elites that are operating at the moment. 
Uh, you under a crown slave, system. A slave. As, essentially a slave. And I said, That's what you are. Yeah, and I said, now... Without sovereignty, you're a slave. Without sovereignty, you're a slave. Absolutely. So, and uh, anybody and can come in and take all your assets. And that's what they're doing. Y- that's exactly what's happening. And I say, sooner or later, either we change the way that is, or basically, forget about it. Forget about ever, ever wanting to be even so remotely I, be free. And what do you want for your children? Do you want to have your children enslaved and to exactly. you, and because you didn't bother doing anything about it? Yeah. You didn't want to listen. You don't ask the questions. Don't you want your children to be sovereign citizens, to have education, hospital care, and 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 be part of the uh, of the civilized world uh, that we have? Travel in planes, have a passport that you can go any place, and be proud that you have you're a sovereign citizen. And and we have it, and we we're, we're desecrating that every day. We see uh, uh, we see what's happening uh, on on that. But anyway, they, look, I, I put up that on, on, on the, at least I don't know whether I put it up or not, but I, I sent it anyway to you. And I, on the back of the, of the 1916 proclamation, I was hoping tonight that you might read the proclamation oh, for people to understand it. And I say, who founded the state? These are the questions asked. Who founded the sovereign republic of era? Question mark. Who founded the Irish Volunteers and the Citizens Army? Who founded the GA? And the answer is the Irish Republican Brotherhood. And if you read the 1916 proclamation and the Sovereign Constitution uh, for confirmation, you get the answers. And those, all those answers, I'm told, as you know, I don't have, I'm not into the, you know, they keep on taking my broadband and taking away my telephone line and everything because they don't want to be speaking. But uh, you get the answers on, look, having, having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open... There, doesn't that tell you who, who, who wrote the 1916 proclamation? And what's Andy Kelly talking about? He said, our... our proclamation. It isn't his proclamation. Well, that was, no, uh, uh, that, 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 that one caught me by oh, surprise. Keep it in trust for the sovereign citizens of the sovereign Dolairn government. When Enda Kenny said that, Billy, he said, our proclamation. Yeah. Now, did he not just place himself under the proclamation by doing that? He did. But he doesn't recognise it then. He's talking both Well, I think he did just recognise it, and I think he, from now on he's going to have to be careful because he did recognise it. Well, it's treason, and it tells you quite clear we place the cause of the Irish Republican Brotherhood under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessings we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor that cowardice in humanity or rapine. And doesn't that tell you? And that's, you can be indicted in, in, in the old and the hair in court, which is still there, it's still in existence, but no one ever hears anything about it. And they have to be taught how to, to uh, uh, be held accountable. And and I think that's I think that's very important. As we are onto onto that, um, if you if you look at as I was looking at that at those papers which I, I mentioned to you, to everybody, there's what five hundred new books out. And where are all these great historians? They are doing this rewriting our history. Why don't they ask the questions? Why didn't they ask the question of Enda Kenny on, on Friday? When he was up, and and we were all we were all supposed to be welcome, and yet no one knew it was on. In, 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 in yeah, that was a bit of a mystery, that one, wasn't and, it? And put up our three flags uh, without. And you, you're talking about. Uh, look, I'm talking about. Uh, I'm lo- looking at that the revolution uh, papers, which are a copy of the papers that were printed in 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 in, uh, in 1916, and you can buy it for I think it's about three euros. And there, I didn't read them yet now, but there's one thing here uh, on the third page, in, on the second page inside, and it says, many uh, newspapers of, uh, of the, wait, no, I'm trying to see it, hold on a minute. Take your time. Many newspapers of the time referred to the Easter Rising as a Sinn Féin Rising. This was not the case. The Easter Rising was the result of the planning, leadership, and action of the Irish Republican Brotherhood and the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizens Army. Sinn Féin was a separate and distinct organization which played no part in the events of April 1916. This is the papers 100 years ago. And, and what? You see, everybody is trying to go out and pretend 
Sinn Fein hat verstanden. Der Sinn Fein, das wir should have, ist der Sinn Fein, whose allegiance is to the state, the sovereign republic of era, and was founded and funded by the Irish Republican Brotherhood and the Fenian Brotherhood. And that's the mandate we were given to found and fund the state, which we did on the 21st of January 1919 by the will of all the people. And, and that's what people should understand. And, and you have all these people. It's like De Valera gone off to America at the time, and he saw all the, the huge number of, of people. And he decided that he would get them to support him financially and every other way. And he wanted to, to run the, 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 the country. And uh, that's why he set up uh, Fianna Fáil. And as you notice, he left out Republican out of that. And how can Fianna Fáil stand up and say they're a Republican Party when they're not? They're only telling lies. Yeah, it's a very strange one. And uh, it's there in black and white for anyone to read it. So Billy, and just... should be held accountable, the same as Fianna Gael. And, and why didn't... Why didn't I, I was looking at, at, at a Francis Fitzgerald who wrote a letter to us up in Billy Maguire someplace about Michael Collins on the 6th of December 1921 had to step down from the Irish Republican Brotherhood when he was president of it mm. to sign that illegal and fraudulent agreement uh, uh, and give his allegiance to the Crown of England you, you know, on, well, and, and had to do it. And, and uh, all right, it was under the threat of immediate and terrible war. And, and they would have wiped out Ireland because all I agree. they I, I have to see, yeah. it is all to feed the Crown Forces, and they had the best-fed Crown Forces in, in the world at the expense of Ireland, and they're the facts. And that's why I asked that, you know, when we were asked to give permission to the Irish Republican Brotherhood for the Queen's uh, visit here, and that took 10 years from the House of Lords and that, and I said, right, but it's predicated on the fact that a truth commission must be set up, and all those facts must be come out, because, look, we don't want to fight with anybody. We never went no, to, to war with anybody. Uh, Only a madman, Billy. Her. Only a madman wants to go to war. You know, what do you want? What do you go to war for? Yeah. And these people going off to war, uh, thinking they have the sovereignty and all that, and they can go in and destroy it. That's, why can't you just try the world with a sovereign that every child is born sovereign? And, and you, you, you know, you're total, and every, every person is valued for the, you know, and you can have it because your whole being is predicated on, on the harp. The harp, the four strings of the harp is the first computer known to mankind, and it uh, teaches man how to read, write, count, mathematics, all science, all astronomy. Everything you have comes from that, and your intellect of five senses, and, you know, we count to the, you know, earth, and, 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 uh, you know, nine strings and the twelfth and the, the sovereign trinity. And that's how your being works, and that's how you understand planet work. If we don't do it now, they're all talking about climate change, we'll destroy planet Earth. And that's what's going to happen. You can see it happening every day because people don't want to understand it, and it's there. Every child can understand that. So can we just move forward, if you don't mind, Billy, to uh, January 21st? Right. So... Um, I mean, have you confirmed? Has anything been confirmed yet? Well, as you know, I wrote was in September to the Lord Mayor and asked about. I mean, I think it is on now. There's no, and we were told that twenty people uh, would be considered, but the Lord Mayor would give the invitations. We cannot give the invitations, right. and as you know, Dublin City Council. Uh, well, I mean, I do understand that it's the Lord Mayor's dwelling. It is, but it's Dublin yeah. City Council are calling the shots, and they don't want the Irish Republican Brotherhood to, because they, you know that water thing at the time. Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm saying. I mean, I understand that it's a delicate situation, I suppose, in one way, but it's not an impossible situation. But you look at the Holocaust. Was they will be there? Is it the following Sunday or Sunday week or after? That's right. And they had 150 people inside in the in the in, in the cabinet room, and we're only allowed 20. I think they. I think they. In fairness, I think they take out the table for that, though. They do to take out the table. So I can kind of understand that. As, I mean, again, but I'm trying to be used reason. Take out that table. There's a man there who does yeah. it, and I mean, they do it. And you think it's a big job? I saw them doing it because yeah. one day we were doing it, and they had to come in and do it immediately. We had to be out of there by one o'clock, and they had to take out the table. And by the time we had packed up, they had the table all gone. Yeah. Oh no, it'll go in ten minutes. But I'm saying like they do, or ten or fifteen minutes. But they do take it out for that, is what I'm saying. So in yeah, theory, they do. But, but yet yeah. we're only allowed. We're only allowed. 
print. You know, where the state was, we don't seem to want to find the state, but, uh, and, and, you know, we should be proud that we have what those volunteers, and we should be honouring their memory. They gave their lives. They carried eight strings IV Irish volunteers. And as you know, the Sovereign Seals, the Book of Psalms is the Psalter, and our Sovereign Seal is the Psalter, the instrument that accompanies the Psalms. And, and it has the two images, from wrong to right, evil to good, man's intellect and reason. And that is Anno Domini 2015. It'll be 2016 now on the 21st. Yeah, I just, I just want to throw something out there, Billy. Um, I did a refresh on the site, folks. I don't know if anybody's asking questions on the site because I can't see the chat box at the moment. So if you have a question and you, it's feel, you feel real, it's real important to you, I'm very sorry to say you're going to have to call in. Uh, I, I, that's just what can I say. I can't see the chat box. Um, so, Billy, for January 21st, um, the intention well, I don't so far. We know what's going to happen, and that's the truth of it. Okay, what but, we're but, told is, um, and we're having, you know, um, what we're told, what we're hoping to do is that in the morning of of the twenty first, that uh, we will, the Irish Republican Brotherhood would raise their tricolour flag on the GPO, but there seems to be difficulties on that. That when health and safety reasons. I don't think there was any health and safety reasons 100 years ago in 1916, because that's our, our tricolour flag, as we've explained. And as you know, when the proclamation has been read, I have to hold that tricolour flag in my hand. Well, now, can you explain that? that? Because pe- that people have heard you say that. The, own that flag. Can you explain and that again, Billy? In trust for the sovereign citizens. That's why we hold it. It's never been captured, as you know. And as you know, it was taken down by Dermot Lynch and kept in Vaughan's hotel. In that fact, I believe it was taken up by the, on, the, on those on the tunnels that we were talking about in the rotunda up to Vaughan's hotel. That's how it went up there. And it was kept there. Which would since. make sense, of course. It was ratified by the will of all the people on the 21st of January 1919. And um, we're going up then to the mansion house we believe, and there's only 20 people allowed in, and they're at the uh, at the invitation of the Lord Mayor only. Now, they're not going to allow any other people. They don't want people at the mansion house. And um, what they're doing then is we're going back down to the GPO, and we read our proclamation, and then we're going up Moore Street and explaining Oglin Heron's uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the evacuation plan, which is in the Vaughan's Hotel papers, I've often seen it, uh, for going up Moor Street. That's the reason. I mean, they haven't gone up Moor Street for a pint or up for a, uh, uh, you know, or some sort of a, a chat. They were going up. They were, that was the escape plan. Of and to go down those tunnels that are in the rotunda, although, as I said earlier, that um, those great historians who have asked to go down to those uh, tunnels um, said, oh, no, there's no tunnels on. Bartle Darcy, who has done, uh, you know, for the O'Donovan Rossa and is doing, uh, you know, the, the commemoration for uh, 2016 in the Rotunda, he told me, I think it was last Monday week, that he was down in those tunnels, and they do exist. And that was the escape plan. And the Crown Forces... Absolutely, sure, I saw a photograph of him right? down there. I saw, a photo- Sorry, Vincent? I saw a photograph of Bartle Darcy down in the tunnels. Oh, did you? Yes, he has a photograph on his uh, Facebook page if anybody wants to go oh, and have a look. Oh, I didn't know that. But uh, anyway, he dragged me to tell me that they were there because I've been shouting about it for so long. About people. You know, If you don't understand those facts, how can you understand what happened in 1916? You see, Ender Kenny doesn't want you to understand 1916. And neither does Fianna Fáil. Or even the labour. And it, I, I'm it, is it a case that they actually don't want to, time. Billy? I mean, is it a case that they don't actually want to? They more? don't want you to understand it. They don't right. want you. They want to control you. And and you, you know, they don't want you to ask any difficult questions like, where's your license to trade? And, and uh, you, you know, about the tricolour. They want to think that they can take our tricolour whenever they want and use it and do what they like. But they can't because it's treason. If you read the proclamation... Anyway, we're going up to there... And and Barclay is going to explain, uh, uh, because he's having an exhibition on there in February, and we're going to be able to see the, the tunnels, which I'm looking forward to seeing uh, all these years. And then we're going up to the Garden of Remembrance, and we're saying prayers for our, all those coming among the Fee, Nene, the Heron, uh, the Irish Volunteers, Citizens Army, and all who gave their lives. Um, and then we're going over to Vaughan's Hotel because that's where the state was actually founded and funded by the Irish Republican Blood and the Bill, including my own family. And uh, we're going back down then to Wynn's Hotel 
Um, now, and they had that booked from three to six. What what and what type of capacity will that take, Billy? How many people will fit into the room? It's up in the, in the ballroom. I'm not sure. But it's it's like we're talking a few hundred, yeah. I'd say so. I'd say so. I don't okay. know exactly. And but anyway, from three to six. Now we don't know whether the Lord Mayor is going to come down there and read the proclamation. Right. I asked Barclay on the other day, and uh, which, uh, but uh, and she will read the proclamation in in the cabinet room when we turn the sovereign seal and claim our sovereignty. Right. Because all licenses are only legal, valid, bona fide. From the, that's very important about that. It licenses. is. It is. Now there, there's there's and, something you said there, Billy, and I just I'm sorry. I just want to bring you back to it because again, there was some people who were uh, I'm going to tell you straight. They were they seem to be a bit. A bit miffed, a bit upset, the fact that uh, they they are seemingly uh, that I don't know whether it's Dublin City Council or the Lord Mayor's Office or whomever, but that they don't want the people to attend at uh, yeah, the I mansion that house. Yeah, too, you know, because I mean, it is a wonderful, joyous day. Well, I see. I I I I'll just and and uh, and the Kenny and the part of the Foreign Affairs uh, were saying that you know there's a million. Uh, Irish people in Argentina they're all celebrating and all the countries in America and all these countries around the world and we're not allowed to celebrate here but I'll also bring one to something which is very important Vincent and I'm reading yesterday's Irish Times right Prince of Wales may be invited to 1916 event right and this is Heather Humphreys and how is it that she refuses to invite the Irish Republican Brotherhood and the Fenian Brotherhood to any event and then the Kenny has refused to invite the Irish Republican brother in defeat. Would that happen in any other country in the world? And that's very and interesting. On, and it um, says, it says, anyone can read just as Irish Times, and it's an article by Rowan McGreevy. Prince Charles may be invited to an Easter Rising commemoration event. Minister of Arts, Heritage and the Game, like Heather Humphreys, has said, I know that Prince Charles has uh, uh, indicated... Uh, uh, that he would be uh, would like to come back to Ireland, and then you go down and you you read you read you read about um, where have I got now uh, the government uh, no uh, this says um, she also says about the uh, this is the Miss Humphrey said I don't want anything uh, oh yes the, the unions will yesterday uh, hundreds of people turned out for that event on on, on Friday. No government from a uh, foreign government other than the ambassadors would be invited to the main event. And the organization, the, the Irish uh, Republican, the Fenian brother, who founded the whole thing, who owns the tricolor flag, and, and who owns all those flags and the Star of the Seals and symbols of the proclamation, are not invited to any event. Now, that's, it's very strange that you mention uh, Heather Humphreys, Billy, and I'll tell you why. Somebody had joined our website, People's Internet Radio. I'll say somebody for the moment because they basically were, they used the name Heather Humphreys and they had it spelt, they didn't have it spelt the way Heather Humphreys has her name spelt, they had it spelt with I-E-S rather than the Y. Right. And the email, I'm actually going to say what the email address was because I don't actually believe it was Heather Humphreys, qu- quite frankly. But uh, I think perhaps uh, if Heather Humphreys or one of our people or somebody is, is listening, perhaps they should be aware of this, that somebody is seemingly using an email address that could possibly lead people to believe it was coming from her. And the email address they were using was hhtdaroctus uh, at gmail.com. That was the email they were using. They had joined the site with that email. Now, because of they were very disruptive on the site, and we removed them. But that was the... I'm going to read that email address again. It was hh, meaning, I suppose, Heather Humphreys, TD, Aroctus at gmail.com. And as I said, we do not believe for a moment it was Heather Humphreys that was uh, in under that. So okay, in case somebody might be using that to, um, I don't know, uh, to lead people to believe that it was Heather Humphreys, I don't know. Yeah, but isn't it, Vincent, isn't it unbelievable that the organization who funded and founded the state and those volunteers who gave their lives are not invited to the celebrations in, in 2016. Well, as I said, it, Billy, uh, I don't think if, if, if Prince Charles was to come over and attend with, with, a, you know, with something from the Crown to say, yes, that, uh, that the, the, the charge of treason to the Crown has been lifted on the leaders of 1916, I don't think anyone would have it. In fact, I'd say he'd be welcomed. Oh, of course. Look, 
Sure, we're not against anybody. The Irish Republican Brotherhood, we're all for our sovereign citizens and the welfare of them properly educated, properly fed and found and looked after. That's what we're all about. But when I see, when I see, look, and here we have yesterday's event that talked about Dublin Castle and, and, and it says um, that President Michael D. Higgins, Michael D. Higgins is not the president. He is the usurper president. He is of, of the, the British apartheid system that was imposed by King George V in, 19, uh, in, in, in 1921 on the 6th of December as a British apartheid system and an orange free state. And that's what he is. And he is, uh, his allegiance is to the crown of England. He does not recognize the sovereign republic of era. He uses our symbols. And as you know, I had murder with him over okay. putting that gold braiding, that admiralty gold braiding around our tricolor flag. And I was told by the Department of uh, 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 of foreign affairs. We didn't use the Irish Republican Brothers tricolor flag. We used a fourth colour. We don't have a fourth colour flag. That's so important, Billy. I'm very sorry. Can you just repeat precisely what you just said there again? About the what? About the, the fringe on the flag. They said they did not use... Oh, that's the British Admiralty Code. They said, we didn't use the Irish Republican Brothers tricolor flag. We used a, four, uh, a, a gold, a fourth colour is what they called it. Uh, 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 we didn't choose your flag, and who, they said. Who was it said that to you? Well, it, it, came from, it came from the Department of Foreign Affairs. And did they send that to you in writing? No, they won't put it in writing. Right. They just said it over the well, phone. I did ask, I asked uh, uh, Michael D. Higgins' wife about it, and she said that they had nothing to do with it. It was the Department of Foreign Affairs right. that did that. I asked her, I met her, and she's a very nice lady. As you know, I know Michael D. Higgins since we go back a long, long time. Yep. And the contempt he has for the Irish Republican Brotherhood is unbelievable. The contempt that Andy Kenny has. And, the, and if you read, I'm reading bits of the paper here for you about uh, what he said. Um, he said the, the flags uh, were raised in the tricolor and the flag of the Irish Republic, both of which flew over the GPO during the Easter week, 1916, and the Irish Citizens Army flag with the Tower and the Stars, which flew in the Imperial Hotel. And yet he doesn't recognize any of them. He doesn't give two dams about those flags or where they came from. It's a political stunt all the time. And he's leading us into absolute disaster. As a screen of all, I can tell you, the provisional government, there is no place for a provisional government in the sovereign republic of era in 2016. And if people want to vote for that, which is coming up very soon, be it on your own head. And don't be criticizing that you haven't this and you haven't that. And what's going to happen when we we told we have to get out of Europe? Who's going to pay your bill? Who's going to pay your electricity bill? You, you won't. We have a sovereign government that we can stay in the European Union. You cannot sit in the European Union round the table. Uh, with a provisional government and General de Gaulle. And if, if you've got any of those, uh, uh, and you'll have plenty of people in the European Union that will be bring, because I know from here, living here in Kappa, the amount of people from Europe that are coming over asking me about our sovereignty and about how the sovereign government, it's all down there. I think they're clearly point. worried about it, Billy, because they were, yeah. they were clearly deceived about this too. They are, absolutely. We're deceiving the whole world. They said they're hungry, and she'd write to Prince Charles, and she'd write to all these the ambassadors to to uh, to to for the hundredth anniversary, and she refuses. I met Heather Humphreys down at the University of Limerick there last autumn, and I gave her all the information. I was had to sit for an hour because I know the Plassey House very well, where she was having lunch there with her entourage. And I sat there for an hour while she had her lunch. And when she came out, I spoke to her and I welcomed her. And I said who I was. And I said, there's the River Shannon. And, and we're both, uh, uh, you, you know, and, and there is talk that, um, you know, that and the, the unions are being invited down, I see here on the paper. And they're more than welcome. I remember that, um, uh, what's that? the new who's taken over from Peter Robinson I remember some years ago she wanted to attend I don't okay. know really what happened but from oh I heard about I that yeah I can't remember her name but you look we have those people are welcome we, we welcome everybody we're not against anybody no but what we want is that, our, that sovereign government 
that was by the will of all the people on the 21st of January 1919, all 32 counties. See what this is about, Billy. It's want. about what's we want right. that government to be up, and the, that's the legitimate government of the state. It's about what's and right no at that time. what country in the world cannot point a finger at us and say, you are, uh, you're, you're lying. Your propaganda lies and deception, and that's what those politicians are doing, mm. and, and selling out the people all the time. We want our sovereign government by the will of all the people, question the there legitimacy from, of the state. A question there from uh, somebody in the chat box, Heather, Heather Humphreys from Fine Gael. That's the one who you mean, yes? That's the one I met, yeah, for yeah. Heather Humphreys. There was I another thing. The um, University of Limerick when she came down. There was something else, Billy. That, that just I, I saw earlier on on uh, I think it was on Facebook. I think I saw this, and I thought I must remember to ask you this and to say this to you. I know we've said it before, and I, I have actually asked you in the past, but because I saw it again on Facebook, and I think whoever put it up there may be listening. Um, and they were talking. I remember I said it to you because I was a bit confused as to why it was the way it was, and that was that uh, they were confused about the color of the constitution being the azure blue again they were confused they thought it was a royal blue and i said i said to no, myself, no, i'll make a mental note to let them know blue. say and again that is uh, azure blue and and actually our color is not people think it's green it's not it's actually blue and it's a gold braid it's gold on the blue that's for the irish republican brotherhood the green is is uh, would be regarded as the Fenian. And, and, uh, but what but I'm trying to say is that the actual flag, uh, you know, the, on the gold was always gold because gold was the most. But it is actually blue. The, whoever's on about that, and it's yeah. No, so I, I just want them to be told there. It is cor- like in theory, it, it is the correct color. The, the little blue book constitution. It is the correct color. It should have air here under the sovereign seal, though. It has to have air. If it isn't, look. If you get something from the income tax, and your income tax, uh, and and there's no air underneath it, who are you paying your taxes to? Exactly. And uh, but the provincial government isn't allowed to use air on nope. the thing. That's why you don't see it. That's a desecration of our sovereignty. And I'm only asking that they do things correctly. Exactly. You know, that's that's very important that people know. I mean, as as I said about that, uh, you know, when I was in, in, in France, and I mean, all, you saw what happened in, in France, yeah. and Irish, those young people didn't know what was on their passport. They knew nothing about their tricolor flag. And the head of, of, of security came over to me, and he said, they are terrorists, he said, they would not be allowed. This was last May, and look yeah. what happened since. And it's, you have a responsibility to know what's on your passport and to know about your tricolor flag and the history of it. And about Dear McLinch, he was the one who took it down. Well, it makes sense. I mean, it makes absolute sense to know. Huh? Yeah. Arlene Foster, was that who you were talking Arlene about? Arlene Foster. That's Thank you very the much. Person. And she wanted to come there some years ago. And uh, she was at the other party, I think, at that stage. And I was being asked, now, I don't know whether it was they were putting me up to it or not, but they were made a big play that she wanted to come down and they would, should be down and all that. And what would the Irish Republican Brotherhood on the 21st of I said she'd be more than welcome. And there is talks that uh, she would be one of the people at the Mansion House on the 21st. And it would be very strange because we're both from Fermanagh. This is what was pointed out to me. The, uh, I, Aileen Foster and, and the Maguires, my family, are, were both from Fermanagh, okay. and that we share that, and um, it, and uh, that uh, it would be very peculiar that Enda Kenny refuses to attend the 21st, as does uh, Susan Denham and, and uh, Michael D. Higgins, who claims to be uh, president. He's not president. He's the usurper president. And do we, do we have any idea, Billy, who else may be getting invited? Or? We do, we do. We think that the American ambassador who wouldn't refuse, who refused to come last year okay. is, is going to come. And, of course, the Indian ambassador, while well, an Indian representative, because, as you know, President mm-hmm. Geary, the fourth president of India, he That's was right. here doing law. And I met him, and I told you that as a child. And he was he's a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the Fenian Brotherhood, Ogden and the Heron, uh, and and uh, um, and in fact, if uh, if people and, go to uh, my uh, Facebook India's page, independence came out of the Vaughan's tell the that Liverpool salt tax. I mean, yeah, I if people go to my Facebook page, you'll see an article we about uh, him in South Africa. But Geary is very interesting, uh, and uh, you know, to think they couldn't unite their people, as you know, the GA Michael Cousy was only fronting for the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the Sam McGuire the Lee McCarthy trophies, or Irish Republican Brotherhood trophies. And we're hoping that on the 21st, we, you know, this set of medals that we made, yep. uh, beautifully made, 
for well, all Ireland medals with the sovereignty. They're not all Ireland medals. They're only all GA, the corporate body, and all things with the symbol of the serpent. They're of no consequence to anybody. And but we have a set, and we have a set for whoever wins the Sam O'Brien and the Lee McCarthy this year. And we hope that on the 21st that they will, the Dublin team. We'll come to uh, Vaughan's Hotel and we will just where Sam McGuire, that was his office there in, 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 in 29 Parnell Square. And it would be great if the Dublin team came down with the Sam McGuire on the 21st, uh, wouldn't it? Uh, and, and, you know, these are little things. And I must say that Bartle Darcy is doing great work trying to, to get them, but he has awful difficulties. My God, the man, I don't know how he puts up with it. I mean, I've to look. I'm doing it for so long that is, and I've seen it. All these things going on, uh, uh, you, you know, it's very hard to see, you know, our volunteers and Citizens Army being betrayed all the time by our own people. But at the end of the day, Billy, I mean, again, again, and hats off to Christina and Harry uh, and, oh, and yes. yourself and all the good work, everybody. And, and as well, you said, I'd love to, you know, and Christina, and she has an awful year, and I yeah. would like to particularly wish Christina. Uh, a very happy New Year this year. She had a most dreadful yeah. year last year. She's so strong oh, to be able to, to put up with it, you know. But um, it is anyway. Am I over my time? <laughs> just, you, just you, know, <laughs> you let me go on. <laughs> and uh, as you know, they always say we oh, don't start the clock when Billy Maguire calls in. We don't even start the clock, Billy. <laughs> and he goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> but anyway, um, um. Anyway, what? but you look, we haven't spoken anyway for such a long time, because I, they, they actually, it was, I believe it was the Queen's visit, the MI5 did a sweep of the area, and, and my phone line, which was my broadband as well, was God gone, taken away. Mm. But anyway, it's back again. They keep taking us and putting us away. <laughs> I don't know why they keep I'm doing trying it. to keep you in your place, Billy. Huh? They're trying to put you in a box. I suppose so. But anyway, <laughs> look, we're still here, and... Yeah. You know, it's great to be able to talk to you, and it's great to be able to talk to our people. And our people are the best people in the world. All yeah. they need is a sovereign government. That's all they need. That's look all. what the country would have. In fact, look, look I mean, and, and, and I've said it here a million times, Billy, it's the whole world. Everybody across the world needs to have a sovereign government operating everybody, as their actual... If you don't, you're born yeah. to slavery. And yeah. people, the way they are, all these church and state, the way they, they enslave our people, you know, and they do. Mm. And if you don't have it, and wise enough... And educate yourself. I mean, it's so easy to educate yourself today with all the, the technology that's out there. And that's what the Irish yeah. Republican Bill. There was nobody thinking of technology in 1950, but the Irish Republican Bill group. And all you want to tell the truth. I mean, Andy Kennedy should be, he should be. And I hope Jerry Adams now will, will come together. And I said the door is open now. And I mean, Sinn Féin, they call themselves every night you see Sinn Féin on, on, on the screen, on... RT and Sinn Féin did this and Sinn Féin got 12 million in America. But Sinn Féin, that's all Irish Republican Brotherhood money, but we don't get any of it. Because you can't be claiming you either are or you're not. And if you want to be genuine and 100% and, yeah, and read the proclamation and the sovereign constitution and what those volunteers went out and gave their lives for, that's what we want. And we want our people to be proud that to walk through the world and have all these facilities for our people that's what we have 70 million people well, worldwide. this is it i mean it, it's and a I, very I, it's a very paper there for the result, uh, about the department of foreign affairs going to all these countries the world i think they said between a million uh, a million was it a million people in argentina alone of irish descent and all want wow. to celebrate 2016 and the irish republican brother nothing we're not invited to anything I mean, O'Donovan Ross, one of our great members, and, and we weren't allowed. They said that we would have placards at the uh, no, no placards. At the event. We don't carry placards at any event. No. And going up to Arbor Hill, and I believe they're going to. I mean, again, I, I've said it so many times, Billy. That the one thing that always impressed me about you and everything you ever said, it was always so about dignity. It was dignified. It That's was. That's what it was. That's decent. what it is. And if you haven't respect and you have, that's what sovereignty, people don't understand what sovereign, sovereignty is respect for yourself, your being, your senses, 
and your planet Earth, where it feeds you, looks after you, yeah. and and how what a wonderful world we It's have. also about it's taking care of your children and your family the correct way, Billy. Because I mean, okay. how how can a man and a woman who can't look after the land they're living on, how can they expect it to be raising a, a good, decent family? You can't. I mean, you have you to, can't. It has to be, I mean, even you know. if you only learned how to, le- to raise a few spuds and a few, and to see how they work, yeah. and to see how they grow, and to see, to see that's sovereignty. Yeah. Even looking after little dogs, I, I got a new little dog there uh, <laughs> for Christmas, and it's absolutely beautiful, but that's sovereignty. It's all part of the sovereignty yeah. of, the, of the state. Zip. You know, the fish, everything, the cattle. Or people, education, everything, every animal, every plant, every bird, every you know bush tree. That's all part of so everything that grows, everything that lives. That's sovereignty. That's what life is, and we have it. And the harp tells you and teaches you that the four strings of earth, air, fire, and water. And I got a beautiful harp made, and I must thank the prisoners, the POWs uh, in 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 Port Leash. They made me a beautiful harp and uh, with the four strings on it and that's earth air fire and water and um, i'm really in, uh, the, the, i mean the magnificent craftsmanship of it and that's sovereignty that's what sovereignty is and and how you how men learn to write how men learn to count you know every, all the deeds turn up so the sundial the compass the winter and summer solstice which we just have to having that's all on it all how how you measure land you know latitude and longitude what a, what a symbol. And, uh, you know, of all the symbols, that, of all the gifts given to mankind, the harp, a co- the covenant between God and man, how he lives his life and uh, in, in, on planet Earth, you, you know. I mean, and we have it, and we desecrate it. And, uh, you know, that upsets me. But anyway... Uh, well, look, at the same time, it's, it's only through education, conversation and interaction that we're ever going to re-establish these things. I mean, I've, say, I've heard people say things like, oh, do we even need a government? And of course, I would say, well, it makes it's a perfectly reasonable thing to have a government. I, I think the idea of government has been so badly abused by the, all those who claim to be legitimate governments over the last hundred years that people, because they don't actually know what a true proper sovereign government is supposed to be like that they have a very negative opinion of government i suppose and which is understandable but it's only if you if you actually knew how life would be with a sovereign government in a sovereign republic i don't think anybody would ever look back it's the way forward it's and, logical and it's, and it's, it's reasonable done. i mean it's and but you see i think greed all these things come in people see pull strokes well, get, people can still uh, you know p- people need to realize billy in a sovereign republic you can still go and earn and be you know you can make yourself yeah. rich if you have the capability you can make yourself a yeah. wealthy man that's not a problem i mean i've often sure. said that to people about mathematically perfected economy that just because there's a mathematically uh, perfected economy, it doesn't mean you can't make yourself extraordinarily wealthy. If you so choose, and if you have those abilities, you can still do it. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. What, but it's amazing what we have, and yet we don't... We don't but anyway, we'll look on, on that thing about on the Irish Times yesterday, about uh, the Prince Heather Humphreys inviting all these uh-huh. people. And Enda Kenny, I'm trying to find the piece about Enda Kenny, what he said about... Um, uh, well, I mean, that's a question, Billy. I mean, what, what if, what if you turn up on on twenty first and there's Enda Kenny standing there? What will happen? <laughs> How will that go? I'll say you're very welcome, and thank you for for recognising the the state, the sovereign republic of Era, the sovereign republic in Dáil and government, which you should be, and you can go to to the European Union with a, a, a very light heart and tell them that you are a sovereign government and you don't have to lie or cheat or propaganda lies. Yeah, exactly, and he better start acting like be, it, as the uh, fellow says, because uh, under that proclamation, I mean, he's already said, he's already claimed it by saying our proclamation, yeah, right? Yeah, he has, but he, 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 he says it. That's only a political. It's like I had ruptures. No, well, I, I mean, I at I the same time, to, he said um, it. The people heard him say it. He said it. He put himself publicly underneath it. That's what he did. It is, because he's, he's written here, and I'm trying to Find it Whether he likes it or not, that's what he said. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, President Michael D. Higgins, T. Shock. He's not T. Shock, he's provisional T. And the Kenny. Members of the cabinet, North and Ireland, North and Ireland, Deputy uh, Martin McGuinness, first man, and uh, European uh, uh, commissioners, Bill Hogan. These are the people who attended. But Ender Kenny said something very, he was talking about the sovereignty and the sovereign government, but he doesn't recognize it. And, 
uh, Mr. Mr. Kenny described, this is what Mr. Kenny described, uh, Easter Rising as a result of poets. Oh, yeah, we go down a bit from that. We uh, respect the dignity and the the Jew, I think it is Jew, is it? Jew, we uh, uh, cherish uh, the participants and the ideals contained in the proclamation for which they fought so clearly. You know, here he goes on about uh, you, you know the proclamation, and yet he obviously cannot read. Well, it's in there three times. Sovereignty. That's what I was going to ask you tonight. Would you read that proclamation for everybody? And and because it's it's the first of the thing, and I think you should read it, Vincent. Have you got a copy of it? I do indeed. And I think Kenny can't read it because if he did, he would have read. He would have read. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, he would have understood who, not Enda Kenny owns the proclamation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, who funded and founded the state with, this, with their sister organization, which, and we must say it too, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, 18, um, you, you, you know, down in 16 Lumber Street on St. Patrick, we said it at the beginning, you know, that's very important. And, and and by John O'Mahony in Dohany's in New York. The people should know where these things come from and should be very proud of their their, their tricolor and, and should have respect for it. And and should, if you don't know about it you can't have respect. Absolutely. But I would I think that it would be great if you would read it for, for all indeed. your listeners tonight. And it's the start of the season and they should respect it. And when you hear it and you see your own sovereignty and where it comes out of and what those people Went out, and it says it here on the paper. Seventy, what? Seventy-nine of them gave their lives. Um, yeah, it, it says. Then the Kenny, uh, uh, what we see now, the, the flags were raised, the tricolor flag, the Irish Republic boat of which flew over the. Because he never said that the tricolor flag was never captured by anybody. Yeah, they did that taken down by dear McClinch and kept in vaults to tell it was ratified by the will of all the people. Um, you know, they're talking here about the number 70. When was it? Uh, the names of all 78 volunteers which died as a result of the Easter Rising um, uh, uh, died as a result of the Easter week. Uh, that was the number, and they started and they read them out apparently, and uh, you, you know. But I do feel uh, it would be wonderful to finish our conversation. You must be sick of me by now uh, <laughs> with the proclamation. I will indeed. I'll be delighted, Billy. Public Nairn, the provisional government of the Irish Republic. To the people of Ireland, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years they have asserted it in arms. 
standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. We pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDiarmida, P. H. Pierce, James Connolly, Thomas McDonough, Eamon Kent, Joseph Plunkett. Well, congratulations, Vincent. You, you really read that beautifully. And it is a beautiful document. And it's just... And I said to Jan O'Sullivan, you know, who's over education, you know, we heard another political stunt of Andy Kenny's. You know, they gave our proclamation and our tricolour to every school. We're all for that. But they won't explain. They won't explain it. And how is it that you can read it out there beautifully and you can understand it? And about the sovereign and indefeasible, that can never be changed by anybody. No. And, and uh, Because it's a simple I fact, Billy. include the, the sovereign constitution, you know, the land of Ireland belongs to the citizens of Ireland. Because if it doesn't, yeah. who else does it belong to? I mean, it's, it's so bizarre. It's such a simple document on so many levels, and it's such a complex document on other levels. But yet yes. the basic simplicity of it is, it's, it's asking the question, you see, Billy. It's saying, well, if we, the Irish people, on this land here, if we're not in charge of ourselves, and what happens to us on this land, how the hell could anybody else from a different land possibly be in charge? It's just, it's a ridiculous situation. Yeah, and, and all these documents come from the Holocaust at the time when all the food was taken and we lost, I mean, we, you know, we lost those millions of people and all those people are still being exported uh, by the provisional government and now we're importing other people into the state. Mm. You, 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 you know, we saw... And you still see. Well, look at the floods, Billy. Look what's happening with the floods and evictions and all sorts of crazy things happening all around. Oh, it's right. just bizarre. It really is. Things bizarre. are bad enough with people have to contend in their lives, but for, to have a sovereign government that you could rely on and that you know you're not being lied to, yeah. and you know the strokes, and people have to account. I mean, they didn't even know how much money the the, the banks had, and everybody seemed to be robbing the the assets of the state, and no one seems to be caught. Well, look, the, the banks in Ireland, I've said it before, the banks in Ireland were basically, they're the getaway car. It's the getaway car from the robbery. Yeah. That's what they are. And, and yeah. it's shocking. Absolutely. But it, it is... Uh, but anyway, that's that's terrific to, that you read that. And um, But anyway, I presume that we, we'll be chatting during the year. Of course we will. If I'm still <laughs> able to do it. And... Uh, uh, you know, it, it is a wonderful year, and I do all we want to do is to get the truth out there to our people, but to see how 
all the papers are against us. And, and, and would you agree huh? with what I'm saying, Billy? When I said, I mean, just before you come on, I, I, I had a little talk there and I said to everybody, if anybody wishes to dispute any of the facts oh, raised, yeah. absolutely, by all means, please oh, do. do, do. Please it's do. your sovereignty. You have to look after it. I'm not the sovereign. You are. And that's what you should understand. And, I mean, even the Crown of England, I mean, her sovereignty is coming from us, but she should respect it. She does respect it. But they can't, they can't talk about it. I mean, at this day and age, they want to bring over Prince Charles, and he's going to be the next uh, king of England. He's going to have all these subjects. He, he's very, I can tell you, I've read some of his books and so have you, yeah. and he knows about sovereignty. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And he knows about where it comes from, and he knows about it. And, 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 and I've said it before, and I've said it to you too, Billy, uh, I think... Charles is a different man, shall we say. He's a different type of a character completely from his mother. I think he has a different view on things. I think I it's think a better he has, view. And, uh, you know, the harp is, is the sign of harmony. You know, when you think of all the things it does, mm. and you listen to it, all your senses, the way it, it can, every one of them. But he understands it. I mean, the very first time I met you, you could understand sovereignty, Vincent. It was well, well. very difficult to meet somebody who could understand sovereignty. And it's so simple. Every child in the world... It's initiated, you know, can understand sovereignty because it's, it's your being. And, and, but we should live like that. And, you know, it's all yeah, because it's, it's, it's a wonderful life like that, Billy. I mean, we, I mean who, who here wants to wait until, uh, I mean, again, I understand people have different beliefs. So, but most people have this belief that there's an afterlife, perhaps, or, you know, reincarnation or whatever it may be, that whatever your beliefs are, folks. But. What's wrong with having a good life while you're actually here that now is, and being decent and wholesome? And, and that's uh, you what know. we do. We don't tell people how to live their life no. in the afterworld or right. where they came from. But look, but when that, you're here. Was, that was the greatest gift given to mankind was yeah. the harp. That explains, and I think the world needs that. It needs that information that, look, you, we're not telling you to be slaves or anything like that. Exactly. Just look how Quite the opposite. mathematics... If children mightn't understand, get a piece of string. It's all a piece of string and, and a stick. And, yeah. and you know, you, and you know the way I do the two signs with the two fingers and the world, you know, on your left-hand side, uh, and it's the sovereign seed, and on the right is the half, it's the half sign. That's the sun and the moon, and how it grows all our bio and biomass and all our food. It's just, we have it, but we're not using it. And we, we don't seem to, every, I don't know why uh, it's not taught. And I asked Jenna Sullivan to, to do something about it uh, and to teach, but I'm afraid she hasn't done it. Yeah. And everybody just... Well, I have to say, Billy, I mean, uh, again, I mean, I have it here. I have one in my hand. I always have a piece of string knocking around here. People will always see me with a piece of string. I nearly always have a piece of string. And I use it. I always have a piece of string because if my children ever ask me a question, I usually have a piece of string. And a piece of string is where I begin almost all of my explanations. If yeah. I want to teach them about a circle, I'll wrap a piece of string around it. Well, two pieces of string is how men learn to weave. Latitude and longitude, Copernicus, Galileo, and, uh, you, 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 you know, uh, all these people had to use it. Michelangelo, all these people had to use understood how to use it. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, to do a survey, everything, uh, where the strings cross, uh, how men learned, and the wheel, you know, how the wheel was... Um, uh, you, you know the fellows of the wheel, the strings become the, the spokes, and the hub becomes the. Well, it's like, uh, for example, I mean, I, I'm holding up a piece of string here in front of the camera, folks, and I'm going to bring it near the microphone, and I'm going to do. Oh, something. can you see? Can you? Can people see your program now? Oh, they can see me. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody can. They can see <laughs> the here. modern technology vision. So I mean, this, this piece of string, folks. I mean, they can see here. This string, um, you know, I can do so much to teach people about literally the physical environment they live in by using a piece yeah. of string to demonstrate to them how to master the environment. And you see, people yeah. get confused. They've often heard them saying, I mean, even somebody there typed in the chat, but the, the harp is a musical instrument. That's just one of its functions. It's one, a, one. In fact, the one, way to look at that is the harp is also a musical it's a instrument. harmony. Harmony is the yes. important thing. That's when you've achieved sovereignty, you achieve harmony. And yes. that's what Prince Charles knows about. You know, we've read his, you know... And See, and that's where we have the that. idea. Do no harm. In other words, if you're going against harmony, you're doing harm. Harm. That's what you're doing. Yeah. You see, you understand that, Vincent, which is wonderful. And, and uh, you, you know, and you know, you can't build a structure without that piece of string in your hand. And how uh, well, you, when I was, I was a builder, really. I was a builder, yeah. and every job I want, if I want to know, pull a straight line to lay a hardwood floor, I use a string and a couple of nails each end, and I snap me chalk line. That's the That's beginnings of building you your chalk line. <laughs>
and and that's what's so important that people and if they only did simple things, you don't have to do it. Look, there's modern things and all sorts of things, but they all come from all come well, I mean, if, if I buy a laser beam, that those I, I used laser beams, beams as well when I was building Billy. Made but I tell you here and now, a string is better than a laser mankind. beam. That's what it is. Yeah. And you're the sundial, the compass, the wheel. You know, everything is on it. How you turn it upside down, the inside, Absolutely. the present moon. You know, yeah. and, and, you know, every child should know. Every child should know how to take a coin out of his pocket. Fourteen strings. We talked about Ernest Blythe, and we talked about William Butler Yeats putting them. He did it because he was a member of the Irish Republican Brother and knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. You put that up to the mirror, and you see the harp with 14 strings. It's the sovereign trinity, and then the sovereign on the ohm stick and that. And that's how our civilization comes from. Absolutely. And no matter where you go or how you can achieve... This is, it's, it's about it's mastering. Every, there's, huh? a, there's a methodology. You see, you can, mankind can master nature in many different ways. We can master nature and abuse nature. And what that does is that causes toxic results down the road for your children. Yeah. But we can also, we can harness nature. And okay. we can use nature. And we can destroy for, it, which we're doing at the moment. And we can gain abundance or we can gain, yeah. uh, uh, you Famine. know... <laughs> Famine. Uh, absolutely. That's it. And, and, you know, and we can destroy planet Earth. And I think you men might have done it one time, but I mean, that's... But they can prove... I mean, you create these way, the 12 months calendar. How Tutankhamun built the pyramids of Egypt, saw on your fingers, he's, he's sovereign seal. You, 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 you know, and how they did it with a piece of string and, 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 and a piece of a stick. Yep. And, and sure, you know, it's so simple, the whole it's, thing. Yeah. But we have it, and uh, the point I'm saying to... Uh, is that we should lose it. That's the point I'm saying. And that was the Irish Republican Brotherhood and, and the Fenian Brotherhood, you know. And, and they achieved that, and they wanted to keep that going. And that's what I hope that will be kept going, that people would just understand it. I, 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 I've said it to you so many times here, Billy, that, look, the information is out there. Well, I couldn't put it back in the bag even if I tried. Um, well, you can't. That's the only... <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that always when you say Wouldn't that. Wouldn't be possible. Wouldn't I, be possible. When, before I met you, I can tell you, and Harry and Christina and, you know, all those, you, you know, I thought, you know, this is the end and it's gone. And I think it was. Well, but as you say, you can't put that genie back in the bottle. No, well, uh, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's gone that way. Okay. <laughs> But but it is great. But it is great, and it was great that you read the proclamation tonight. Is that what it's all about? And uh, if you if you would like to just the first page of the sovereign constitution, would you do that? I will. Just the, and just Article Ten: the land of Ireland belongs to the citizens of Ireland. And anyone who has trouble with their house, that these banks and things come in and say we own your house, well they don't own your land, and let them take brick by brick, slate by slate away. But keep your land, it's yours. Article 10 of the Sovereign Constitution. And you, by the time you stood up and asked the questions, we don't want chancers and all these greedy people and lying to us, and, and we want them to account to us and keep the accounts properly. Can you find that? Yep. Just the first page. Oh, ar- ar- sorry, I thought you said Article 10. No, no, if you do the first page, because you need to do the first page and Article 10. So, okay, hang on, sorry, just let me get that back up again. What I'll do is I'll put it on the screen here so everybody will be able to see it as well. So do you mean from the Constitution of the Republic of the Ireland? Sovereign, yeah, the Sovereign Constitution. Okay. Wants to tell you the one from do that. Yeah, I have it here right in front of me now. I'll just I'm going to move you. Well, they're the two foundation documents of the state, and you might as well have to do them. Is that Andy Kenny anyway? He should know. He, I sent them anyway to him, and I spoke about them. And I, I actually handed them to Heather Humphreys, and I, oh, really? I explained about that and her delegation. The, you might as well have been talked to the wall because they didn't. I knew they didn't understand, but they're gone off then. If they don't understand, you think they put their hand up and say, "We don't understand it. We don't okay, know." Okay, so I have it here in front of me here. Right. The Constitution of the Republic of Ireland, to the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we the people of Ireland, dedicate our constitution and beg the guidance of the Holy Spirit that it may be in consonance with thy divine will and contribute to thy thy greater glory. Amen. This constitution shall be the constitution of the Republic of Ireland, proclaimed in arms on Easter Monday, April 24th, 1916, and established by the will of the people 
of Ireland on January 21st, 1919. Do you want me to go... Th- yeah, go down to the, end, well, the next paragraph or two. Okay, Article 1. The sovereignty of the nation is inalienable. It is therefore not within the competence of any generation of the people to surrender that sovereignty, with each generation holds in trust for the nation. The question of surrender of national independence may not be submitted to an electorate. Subject to that fundamental principle, it is hereby declared that all authority in Ireland, legislative, executive and judicial, and all powers of government are derived solely under God from the people of Ireland. These powers are inherent in the people alone by virtue of their sovereignty. They must be exercised in accordance with the principles of liberty, equality and justice for all. Any legislation not in accordance with these principles is hereby declared to be null and void. Well, I go down to Article 10 or Article 7. Is that the... But isn't that very important that people understand that? Absolutely. And uh, isn't that a, is that a wonderful constitution that the, the citizens of the 32 counties voted for? And that's the mandate we have and we hold. And why don't people told that? The 26, and as you know what happened in the 26, that uh, in yeah. 1922, when, when um, and, and Collins, King George V, it was Winston Churchill said, uh, 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 26, when he divided the, from a 26 and a 6, you know, the Orange Free State and that and the provisional government. He said, you have a mandate now, a 26-county mandate in 19... He, how can you have a 26-county mandate when you have a 32-county mandate? Oh. And the whole thing is... And, and, and putting... Dressing up the, 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 the Free State soldiers, uh, they were British soldiers, Crown Forces, in Free State uniforms and, 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 and attacking the, the four courts. You know, the whole thing, why would another country, is the, why should Britain do that to Ireland? Well, again, I mean, I know there were different times, Billy. And I mean, I, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to justify it when I say that, but I do recognise it, that, you know, attitudes were different back then. Um, and I suppose education levels were different and people had come through some very hard times. Uh, but I think now, you know, I always try to look forward and I always try to look for the positive. And I think, well, 2016 is here. It's a 100-year anniversary. We have a chance, we, the people who are alive right here and now, we have a chance to make a huge difference to our lives, our children's lives, and everybody else's lives. And I think we should grasp that with both hands and moment. I think we it. should. And don't you want your children to be sovereign? Yeah, isn't absolutely. that what you, is absolutely. that your whole being? Isn't that yeah. your whole existence? Is that what you're trying to do? Absolutely. And isn't every family in the country trying to do the same? Yeah. And we have it. And... We're, we're, the, the provincial government won't let us recognise it, and to see the sneaky old way they go around, and you, you, you know, and think it's great uh, to betray our people. You know, I don't think it's great. And I tell you, I, I wouldn't put up with it either. Anyway, yeah, that's me going on. When you, um, Article Ten, that's the important one. Oh God, sorry, I, I, uh, that I should. That's me I, confusing I, you. I moved it. Hold <laughs> on, I moved it down again. Let me do that again. Where did I put that now? Oops. Now, this is what I'm telling people who have houses. <laughs> At a terrible moment, hang on, let me find it again. Take, you can tell the bank to come and take each brick, but leave the land, it's yours. Exactly, they can take the house, if they can, take, if they can pick it up, they can have it, says you. Yeah, and the same with those corporations that come over here and don't have a license and don't recognise the state. They can take away their corporations with them, they can, but the land is ours. Okay, I have it here now. The nation, this is Article 10, the nation guarantees to every Irish citizen opportunity for service, a just... No, no, where are you? Article 10. Oh, hang on, which... You're not. The land of Ireland belongs to... Go down a bit. Uh, wait a minute. This is me off the top of my head. I haven't even in front of you. Article 10, the, the, the land of Ireland belongs to the citizens of Ireland and to them alone. You're talking in the yeah, sovereign. Con- sorry, you're talking in the sovereign constitution or the. Or, or no, the sovereign constitution. Yeah, Article One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten. 
Right, go down a bit in 10. Just land of Ireland belongs to the citizens of Ireland and to them alone. Oh, pardon me. Sorry, this is, yeah, this is notes on Article 10. Pardon me, yeah, yeah, yeah. The land of Ireland belongs to all the citizens of Ireland and to them alone. Those That's citizens. by the will of all the people now in the 1918-32 You owned it, and those, no one can put you out of it. Exactly. Those and citizens who hold. take your house for a devious mean. As you, will, you, will you kindly leave the land, please? Yeah. Well, you see, this is, this is the important part here. Those citizens who hold certain portions thereof hold it in trust for the nation and shall, shall use it for the best interest of the citizens as a whole. And I think that's the difference, Billy, that it points to you as a sovereign man or woman to say that's it's up it. to you to hold that land responsibly. Yeah, yeah. You're the sovereign, you see. That's why I keep yeah. telling people. You must understand what sovereignty is. In fact, I must do and a full must be reading. You talked out of by, by your sovereignty by devious people and, and unscrupulous people, you know, who do this. They're there all the time. And they seem to be, we seem to be breeding them now, you know. In fact, I must do a full reading of anyway, this and explore um, the different articles. I say that, am I over the time, Vincent? I must be age or so. <laughs> she must be gone. <laughs> Everybody must be gone to bed at this stage. <laughs> no, there's the listen. There's that tune in. We haven't had a chat, actually, for ages, so we haven't. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah? It's been a while. Well, we were, well, over the last week or two, we have had a few little ones, but only little yeah, ones. Yeah, but, I mean, it's a very important year. And it it's important that people... And anyone with any questions of that, just ask. Should we try and sort it out? Tell them. Well, but look, I mean, I there mean, should be uh, questions, Heather Humphreys, I, 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 and there I, should I, be to Ed uh, and, and um, Joe Burton. I mean, I mean, they don't just recognise the state, and inviting all these people to what? What? They have nothing whatsoever. The provincial government has nothing to do. Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael had nothing to do with 1916. And they're trying to take over and muscle in. And then Michael D. Higgins has gone around and he has no more interest in the sovereignty than the man in the moon. And he'd, 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 he'd evict you from your house in, in two. He doesn't, in he a doesn't heartbeat. Care about the people. In a heartbeat. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I mean, I know him. And I know what he's like. Mm. And I know what Heather Humphreys is like. They're evil people. And they should, have, have, should not be near that and trying to take it over and give, pretend, pretend. 20, if they'd get over 2016, everybody would believe that Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael and Labour founded the state. Labour were there, all right, but they've gone most peculiar altogether. And, and you know, nobody stands up for the people. They seem to be just exploiting the people. I saw the toll road the other day, and should they still collect in toll and, and sprung to the people? You know, the people get no benefits. There's no benefit living in in a provisional government. It's outdated. There's no place for propaganda, lies, and deception in the sovereign republic of era in 2016. And that should be everybody's. And you should be treated with, with respect. And, and the courts, I'm uh, down on those courts because they're under English common law and they don't respect the sovereign constitution, the will of all the people. Uh, and, that's, and, and, and you say, and when you ask them, oh yes, the people are sovereign, they say that much. Oh, there, there, there's uh, something there from Obi Wan in the chat box. Vin, can you ask Billy when did Russia ex- accept and acknowledge did. and recognise? At the very beginning, they were the first, I think, to to acknowledge us. And of course, India, they still do. And India has always said they would come to our assistance because they got the, they would have been India would have been a very poor country. Mm-hmm. And I mean, only for we took on that time in 1916, and that President Geary. Uh, uh, you know, we stood up for the little, and all those brother, brotherhoods in India, yep. in 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 right across the whole Asia, they all gave the intelligence. And I love those forms to tell papers that everybody would read them and see them and see all those great people in America, in in, in and uh, in India and in, in in Egypt and all those people because everybody wants to be sovereign. And uh, as you know, the Hebrew people, they lost uh, the covenant between God and man with all the information because they took it to war. You never take the sovereignty to a war. In 1155, Pope Adrian IV gave it to Henry II to build his empire. But he takes it to war. Yeah. And we have the most warlike neighbors in the world in Britain. I don't know why they're all as one to Well, it's like to this, war. Billy. If, if, if mankind is going to make a decision that the only way forward is through war, then mankind is doomed. That's true. That's all there is to it. In my that's opinion. what's happened up to now, and that's yeah. it. Yep. 
Yes, and I think, and thank you for reading the proclamation and, no, and the sovereign it. constitution. I think that, you know, people alone, if, you, if you're down spirits or that, and you harmony, and you see what those volunteers gave you, that was the gift to you and your children and your grandchildren, that you'd be sovereign, and that the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, of the sovereign republic of air, that's yours. But really, the people and, have and to the accept it, Billy. I mean, the, yeah? the most important thing, I mean, what I keep saying to people, is say, look, see if you read the proclamation, do you accept it? I, and I, they argue, and I say, look, it's not up to whether Enda Kenny accepts it. Do you accept it? It's, you have to accept it first into your life. Those concepts, those principles, do you understand them? Are you aware of what they mean? Do you accept them? That's the first thing that everybody has to do. And only then can you move forward with an educated mind. And, and Vincent, I think the important thing is Sinn Féin should come together, all those bits of Sinn Féin. I mean, what are they fighting about? Nothing. Look yeah. at what's, what's ahead. And Again. look at what's there. They can achieve that. A 32-county sovereignty movement and they, uh, for the good of all the citizens, that's all. Uh, 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 you know, even all the, the you know the unions people that said it will be invited, sure. sure, and they are part of the 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 unions people are sovereign people here. Absolutely. But in England, they're only subjects to the crown. Yeah. And I always no. point that out. And that Arlene Foster, I hope she comes on the twenty fourth. She'd be more than welcome to come yeah. uh, uh, to the to the uh, mansion house, uh, and and uh, uh, you know and. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'm sad that you know everybody can't go because I think it is very sad. But what can I do? I can't. I'm not. I don't. Well, this I, is it. I mean, people have tried to criticise you in the past, and I well, say, well, I what do you want them to do? He's I'm one man. That yeah. Anyway, yeah. Oh, 251 years. <laughs> so, but at least look, Vincent, with you and Harry and Christine and all the rest. John, John is a wonderful secretary. The work he puts into it. I don't know how. Where and again, well, I'm going to say something, Billy. I mean, the amount of people who are on, on, on the radio side here who have a, a tremendous admiration for both you and what you're doing and everybody else. I, should, I'm not, I don't count. It's the people are sovereign. No, well, that's count, no, what counts is your dedication and to, the the, to it. It's the organization. That's all we're trying to do to keep that organization alive. And we've done it for what? <laughs> and that's what we do, right? Absolutely. And, and that's it. And at the end of the day, as long as we can do that and hand it over to your children and your grandchildren. Okay that they can walk through life. And, and look, and I, I'm going to say something else. Even if we can't achieve it in our lifetime, even if we can't achieve it, Billy, I mean, I'm saying, shouldn't we at least pass these ideals and notions to our children that one day they may achieve it? Yes, that's what it should be. It's all yeah. looking forward. We're going forward. And we have made great achievements in other... And, you, you, you know, you talk about politicians and that... And yeah, it isn't an easy life. It isn't an easy life for anybody or anybody oh. wearing a family. It isn't an easy life. I don't know, but well, you know I, all about it. I tell you, and my the sacrifices um, you have to make. As my grandmother uh, always said to me, Billy, hard work's not easy, and dry bread's not greasy. <laughs> yeah, Vincent, <but> it's, <laughs> but it is. It is, and uh, you know the, you know, and I and I think it does for a few people we haven't. They're so dedicated. You know, you, uh, to it. You know, it is wonderful to see it. And exactly. look, we didn't leave it die. Isn't that the main thing? That's what we I'm saying. Those, it's it's, it's an it's, you see at the end of the day, it's, it's just an idea. It's just an idea, and I think it's a good idea. So we should maintain it. Yeah. Yeah. And coming them on the scene, absolutely. The misfortunes, exactly. what they suffered, you know, for us. And I think I think people are beginning to see it. You know, you see the other side of it. I know we went in a bit of a. Well, you see, I think everybody should be relieved in one sense, Billy. That everybody should be relieved, thinking you mean there's a peaceful way forward that will benefit everybody. Yeah, I think that it's something there's that no should be celebrated. We poor violence. We have poor corruption. Yeah. We have poor propaganda, lies, and deception. There's Nobody no wants to see to another man or woman hurt. We want arm. accountability. We want Enda Kenny to stand up and say he's only a provisional government since the sixth of December, nineteen twenty-one. And that's a fact. And until he says that, we're never going to get any place because he's in denial of the facts. And if you're in denial of the facts, you're, and you can, he can't keep lying to Europe and to America. And because there's so many countries in now in Europe, and they're going to start questioning, oh, yeah. why is Ireland getting all this, these grants and this wealth and this, this and that, and, and they don't get it, and they'll be questioning us, and you have to, and they'll have to answer that question. Yeah. I mean, uh, what's Cameron going to do? I mean, where's the whole reason that Ireland is so important to 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 Britain is is the food and the water and the fish, and the, all that food that we have. They depend on. Where are they going to get it from? Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, there's no use going to... And look, and, and, and we live in an abundant island, Billy, and of course we're all willing there to share our abundance. There's I mean, who, for your needs, but there's not for the greed. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, look, uh, yeah. I, I've we always said... We don't want to be at war with Britain. We want no. to be on, on, on with, with, you know, the fine people, the British people. Absolutely. But the, the political situation, and the way they've treated us since since Chris Fogarty's Holocaust. Are you going to put that programme up on, on, the, on your website? Which one? The one we're doing tonight. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because Chris Fogarty, I thought I wasn't speaking to him because I didn't know what was going on. Well, as you know, <laughs> you just surprised me at the last moment that <laughs> we were going to talk tonight. And I haven't anything to prepared for you. Well, either. I believe you're uh, you're coming on with Ray, Ray Hall soon, aren't you? I spoke to Ray. Ray said, would I come on? I said, I will, of course. Excellent. Wonderful. And anyone else who wants me to come on and talk. But I, I look... It can be only a repeat of what I'm saying to you. I'm, I'm sorry I keep repeating myself. Sovereignty, no. sovereignty. Harp, harp, harp. Well, look, I mean, I, I, I think, in fairness, I mean, Ray Hall, he's a great man. He's a head full of questions, too. He may ask you a different question than I haven't asked you. So, yeah, well, there the you more are. to marry. I can answer them, I'll answer the frame. Absolutely. You know, there's Absolutely. no mystery about any of this. This is the most simplest, you know, and it could be great. And it's especially in the year, and it would be wonderful. I'd love to see Sinn Féin, and I've said it to Jerry Adams, to the door is open. You, you know, and to all Good. the other uh, factions of Sinn Féin, come in under the, the the sovereign constitution and the proclamation and the tricolor flag. They, that's what's left. I mean, don't be fighting amongst themselves. You get no place. And, no. you know, somebody walking off being sparked with the assets of the state. The assets are belong to the citizens. That's right. And they belong to your children. And they're, and they're Because if they don't belong to us, who the hell could they belong to? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But anyway, listen, uh, I've enjoyed being on, talking to you, as I always do. And we do, uh, <laughs> we, t- t- we go from A to... Uh, sure. Uh, we go from A to sovereignty, Billy. Huh? A to sovereignty. <laughs> yeah, well, well, if you look at all... But there's one thing that I really did enjoy, and I'll say it again, is, you know, RTE, and you know they don't like me, they hate me, and I asked about the history program. Mm. That's one thing that's on... On Easter Monday, um, Dublin City Council have given out the contract. Do you remember they, everybody dressed up in yeah. pantomime? Yeah, yeah. On Easter Monday, and they've given out the contract. At least they put it out for tender, the contract, I okay. should say, because that's Holligan right. that did it last year and was so successful. And RT, and they refused to talk to us. And as you know, right. those two little girls reading the proclamation, the couple started singing beside them. When they read the proclamation, that was really shocking. Yeah. And but I take it the the, the, the plaque, them, the, the plaque on Lamb- Lombard Street, Billy, the plaque on Lombard Street, that's still there, yes. Oh yes, I believe so. Okay. Christina goes down and she cleans that all the time. And and Andrew, and we must wish Andrew a very happy New Year, and for polishing that and doing it. I have that out at the IRB's uh, office is out, as you know, in the. I put that up. I waited for the electrician for the last year to just plug it in, but he hasn't done it. But anyway, on on Easter Monday, the the Dublin City Council have given out uh, they put out for tender a contract. Do you remember all the everybody dressed up, and RT and because that's our day, we shared our day with them. But you would think that they would come together, and I believe that the provincial government want to go up and uh, to. Arbor, uh, Arbor Hill, where our members are buried. And as you know, uh, Michael Biggs, he carved, it's been four and a half years carving those uh, proclamations in Irish and English. Mm. And Edward, and you know, they still won't put up the Sovereign Trinity over it. And as you know, the Sovereign Trinity over the four horse, that's not properly aligned. They have the harp first, but they should have the Sovereign Seed first, because it's the rays of the sun that grows all your bio and biomass. And the harp, and uh, that's just the harp is the moonbeams, uh, which all controls all the cycles of life and all the tides. And you can see them when you see it put up to life. We did it here when you were here. Mm-hmm. And I th- uh, we haven't even been consulted uh, about Easter Monday. Isn't that awful? And we're hoping that, it, and I said to Hollahans, if you get the contract, that, and they said it was a wonderful day, and I said it was a wonderful day, and it was a beautiful, funny day. But what we wanted was, the three most important things, to read the proclamation that was read there in 1916 by Padre Pierce and to raise the tricolor flag that was raised by the Irish and Fenian Republican Brotherhood that was never captured and taken down by Dermot Lynch and to refer what you've read there to the sovereign constitution. Mm. 
mm. you know, Bulmer Hobson and all that. And uh, what in, and in those programs of this, the RT are showing, but you see, they're only showing it to a very limited people because yeah. most people don't have, you know, RT one, two, three, four, and then five, which five, is yeah. news now, and is on that for the last I don't know how long. But John told me our great secretary, John, I must really congratulate John, who works so hard. He but he has downloaded all those, and you can get them, I don't presume. But as you know, I've never seen Billy McGuire. I've seen a little bit that Harry showed me, and you showed me that time. But after that, I haven't seen anything. Oh, it's very posh now, Billy. And I heard that. Because a lot of people <laughs> ring me up. And from all, I get calls from all over the world. I get people coming in here from all. We never knew about harmony. We never knew about sovereignty. We never knew how important sovereignty is. I said, sure, you can sovereignty. You're only a slave. That's and right. that's, what, I mean, that's what makes us different from... You, you know, and all the our animals and birds, they're all sovereign. It's all life and giving and, you know, all your being and how you do things and how you live your life and how you create things. And, you know, that's what sovereignty is. And it's a wonderful concept. Absolutely. You know, which mankind has. That's the covenant. Well, Listen, I better leave you in peace. No problem. I better, uh, this no. hour has gone on and on. It was a, it was, that, was a, that, was a, that was a short hour, Billy. <laughs> But we get chatting on hops. <laughs> you can close up the shop. <laughs> exactly. So um, I hope I haven't stayed on too long. No, no, no. Thoroughly enjoyed it, as uh, always. We'd, uh, we'd have an old chat during the, the, the exactly. gossip of events coming up and that. We're not advised to any. And it's awful to think that they were, that you're not you're not wanted. And the Irish Republican Brotherhood, the Fenian Brotherhood, are not wanted. by You know, and, should, and they're doing the same thing to our people. The same exactly. attitude. You know, and I don't like that. But should we survive it anyway? That's Listen, it. I'd say good night to all your listeners and thank you for putting up with me. Uh, well, and just one last thing, Billy, before you go, if somebody actually wants to have a direct conversation with you, are you okay with I'm, them? I'm always available to our citizens, and that's what we do. And I've had so many people calling in out here, asking this, have people drive. And as you know, going to the courts, I have given them a sovereign constitution, I've witnessed there, and I've said to them, because when you go into court, uh, if you right, you must do it properly. Mick Weird now is a great person, and he has helped so many people. And you, you, um, the sovereign constitution, and you write to the court clerk and you tell him you want your case heard under the sovereign constitution, as is your right. And you want, and I witness that for him, and he writes out what he wants because you're the sovereign now, remember, and you do it, and he will then. Uh, inform the judge, he would have to show his license that he has, and uh, the judge would have to show his license, and the, and he have to hear the case under the sovereign constitution, and then he's in contempt of court, not you, because if you go in without doing that, they would have you for contempt of court by going in there. They say they have a contract with you with the judge, which they don't. So they say. But <laughs> they try to. Common law, they assume yeah. they have it's crooked. But under the sovereign constitution, you're the sovereign going in, Absolutely. and the judge. I mean, this is what we're talking about: the old and the hair in courts, and the key banks. And we've talked about, uh, and you'll be delighted to know that probably next week or that way, you, I'll, you might read out that letter that I've written. I won't I will say do. any more about it now. Yeah. And uh, 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 those courts are to restrict. It's like. Um, you, you know, the Magna Carta and that, you know, they restrict the authority of the of the courts and of the judges, you know, because you're the sovereign. And that's what it's all about. It's like America. So they're, they're, the Magna Carta is, is what they get their, their law from, uh, which is English law. But they don't have, they, you ask Americans, where would you get your sovereignty from? They don't know. They're confused. They would say, oh, the Constitution. You don't get it from the Constitution. No. You get sovereignty from God. And that's the covenant that's between it. God and man. That's where the Hebrew people And you do have it, and it's up to people to realize it and to activate it themselves, even if they have nothing to do with Billy Maguire, if they have nothing to do with the IRB, nothing to do with anything. It's even up to the people themselves. I mean, I've said that's this many it. a time, Billy. If you feel it and you understand it, put it in place, folks. As Billy said, it's as simple as planting some spuds. It's as simple as planting a fruit tree. It's as simple that's as it. getting your water Very clean. Same thing. Yeah. It's so simple. Look, when every child in the world is born, they can understand that, you know? Yeah. I'd better go. There's a buzzing coming in on the line. What's that? Something I don't know. Out. God knows. <laughs> <laughs>
It's probably Heather Humphreys or Andrew Kenny. Probably. <laughs> They're going to turn up on the 21st. But we'll isn't it awful to snub, to snub those volunteers and citizens' army? Yeah. You know, and... And well, look, as I say, Billy, I mean, I'm trying to focus on the positivity and the good things that may yeah. come out of it. So there I think that's where we should leave it for tonight. Piles of good things for our people. We'll go for that. Piles and piles yeah. and piles. Let, let's have some good news for a change, folks. Yes, yes. Exactly. And let's do things properly. If you do things right, and if you make something, and you create it, and it's good, isn't it yeah. lovely to have it? And you walk away, you're contented. But all that are lies and deception and propaganda. And, I mean, every day we talk about RT. You know, the key, uh, Sinn Féin, why did they come out and say Sinn Féin is the political wing of the Irish Republican Brotherhood? And they founded the sovereign government and under the mandate of the 32 current election. And we want a sovereign government, and that's what we want. And we want to run things as in the proclamation of the sovereign constitution. You know? Exactly. Yes, I, this is buzzing. I don't know what's wrong. No problem. Give it a, give it a smack off. Uh, give it a crack off the wall. <laughs> But anyway, I'll say good night to you, and I'll say good night to all your your, your Thanks listeners. very much, Billy. And I wish them all a very happy New Year and a happy uh, 2016. And hopefully, that people will see sense, especially especially all those members of Sinn Fein, who are only fighting with themselves if they only saw the reality of the proclamation and the sovereign constitution for themselves, and the good it will do themselves and their children, and getting together and put away those old. I mean, those differences they have, I don't know what the, where they even think up these things. Wouldn't it be well, wonderful to see it? I, yeah, absolutely. I always, I, everybody, I think, in fact, I think everybody in the world always celebrates p- uh, peace. Everybody likes to see peace happening around them. They do, That's, of course. So they do, of course. Hopefully more And I bet happen. you everybody wants to see us with a sovereign government and get rid... I mean, Michael Collins, you know, he said that, the, you know, the, the famous uh, steps... Uh, two years, he said that that provisional government was only for two wow. years. In nineteen on the sixth of December, um, nineteen twenty-one. Yeah. Two years, he said, we'll have our sovereign government back. Yep. And and as you know, um, Mary McSweeney took that sovereign. Constitution we're a little bit over two years at the moment. What? I think we're a little bit yeah, over two years. It is because the assets have been taken. Yep. I better leave you in peace. <laughs> <And> say <laughs> good night. And your phone is ringing again. And a great new year. You too. Good night, guys. And as always, that was uh, the wonderful Billy McGuire, folks. And I'm going to give out Billy's number. Billy has said I I can give out his number, so I'm going to give it out to you here. If you want to uh, ring Billy McGuire directly, and if you want to ask him anything at all, uh, if you're not satisfied with maybe I didn't get to ask a question, you type like, I couldn't see the chat box earlier on, folks. The bloody site is driving me nuts. Uh, Hopefully, Ning will have it sorted out by tomorrow. Um, But again, I will say that, you know, I I see some comments now and some people are happy, some people are unhappy. um, And that's fair enough. You know, I can understand that. But um, what I'd say to you is, look, what are we to do? There's an ancient history, there's a modern history and there's a very, you know, very near history from what happened yesterday, the day before, weeks, months, years. You can go forwards and backwards as long, as much as you like. Sooner or later, if there have been trouble or feuds even in your own family, sooner or later, as I say, let's say, let's say a family had two brothers had a row in a family 50 years ago and it's caused nothing but grief in the family ever since. Can't you imagine, you know, 50 years later, eventually when those two brothers come together and make peace, wouldn't the whole family celebrate and think, well, that's brilliant. That's the way I see this. I see that, you know, if we can spread and increase peace, awareness and harmony and friendship and good things and abundance with one another, why not do it? Maybe maybe I might have to swallow something. Maybe you might have to take on board something and just, okay, well, I'm not going to say that to him anymore and he's not going to say it to me. And even if we don't get on, well, we'll just agree to leave each other alone, perhaps, for the sake of peace and harmony. For the sake of peace and harmony, not not for the sake of just to uh, just to go along to get along, because that's not right. I mean, I know people have uh, you know quite strong opinions on this, and I, I I appreciate those opinions. I do, and I understand them. I mean, I never knew anything about Billy Maguire, any of this stuff until um, you know from the from that other website that 
uh, the connection came through through Harry for me to people. I didn't know anything about Billy Maguire. I didn't even really understand the word sovereignty back then, folks. I only know about this since then. And as I investigated it and researched it and tried to work out what it was all about, it wasn't easy. But I didn't have, um, I didn't, I, I didn't come from a family who looked into any of this stuff. Really, you know, my family, we, they, they didn't really do politics. Um, you know, and I, I was never reared in that vein. I'm being honest with you here, folks. I didn't understand the situation up to the north of Ireland when I was young. I didn't have a clue. Uh, I mean, I knew there was issues and I knew there was problems, but I didn't really know what they were. I, I Because down here, and it, it wasn't my fault as such, because most people that I was educated with, they didn't know either. Because we weren't, quite frankly, we weren't told. We weren't told. We looked outside our door and it was, as far as we were concerned, well, everything looked okay. It wasn't okay, but I didn't know that then. But I look out, I, I look there now, and I think, okay, now I, at least now I know what's wrong. Because I've taken the time to go and identify, well, what exactly is wrong? From what I can tell, the biggest thing that's wrong is that the whole, the whole of, I'm going to use a term, uh, as a blanket term, if you will, the whole of Christendom, right? Every Christian, be they Whatever denomination, because there's, I don't know how many Christian denominations there are, but the whole of Christendom, apparently, is operating with usury in a monetary system when the founder of Christendom said, don't do that, and got very angry. And we all know about the story. We've all heard the story. We've all read the story. We've read it in the Bible. We've been taught about it in religion classes and what not down through the years. As I say, regardless as to what domination, the, uh, denomination you're from, everybody's been taught about it. And yet, we're all doing it. Why are we all doing that? And why don't we investigate why was that in the Bible? Why was that in Scripture? And such, to say, that was the only instance that the man got angry. It was the only instance. I think the reason is obvious. Because if you have usury in your monetary system, it's the path to certain destruction. It's absolutely the path to certain destruction. It's, there's, <laughs> you know, the only way out of it is to sacrifice what you believed were your natural resources and they run out sooner or later. After a couple of generations, they're gone. Well, then what have you got? Nothing. You don't own the roof over your head. You'd have to rent the shirt on your back. Okay? And I just don't think there's any... I don't see the reason that mankind has to live like that. Any man, any, any of it. I don't see the reason. I mean, look at this wonderful planet we're on. Look at it. Isn't it incredible? It's incredible. Look at some of David Attenborough's uh, Life on Earth or Planet Earth videos. Um, it's the incredible complexity of life and its abilities and its, its myriad of... Uh, forms and shapes and stuff. We, we know almost nothing about what's going on on this wonderful planet that we're living on. We know all we have to do is get some seeds from foods we like to eat, you know, pop them in the ground in the right conditions. Up comes, for all intents and purposes, free food. We can use timber from trees to build our houses. I mean, with modern technologies, you can build a timber frame house now, folks. That's That's good enough to be, you know, a uh, hundred year lifespan of it, that house. No problem. We have these technologies. Um, you know, there's just, there's just no, what's the need to have this ridiculous notion in the monetary system? I just don't, you know, it doesn't cause us to strive. Mankind, look, mankind builds and constructs anyway. That's what men do. Men, if let's say, for example, um, you're living in an abundant society, mankind will still go and say, you know, see that old fallen tree over there? I, I, you get a couple of boys together and they say, you know, I think we're going to, let's let's go over there and uh, see if we can't, maybe we'll build a bridge over that river out of it. We, 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 we're not lazy. Mankind is not lazy. Humanity is not lazy. I'm going to tell you, like most men, I enjoy working. I loved it. I loved my working life. Well, you know, physically, what I actually did physically, I, it was the best thing I think I ever did in my life, uh, in many regards. I, I mean, other than being a father, I'd be killed if I didn't say that. But I mean, I, you know, I used to take absolute pleasure 
in taking a jack plane or a number seven plane or whatever and honing that blade to you know to a mirror finish a scary sharp he used to call it and i would it would you know the pleasure i got out of you know playing it down at a really nice piece of piece of exotic hardwood till it was just perfectly smooth you get a better finish planing a piece of wood folks with a manual plane than you will with the finest sandpaper a planed surface a proper carpenter who really knows his you know his trade he can plane a piece of wood smoother than any sandpaper will ever sand it that's how good it is how are we doing time wise 10 minutes to go okay um well maybe i'll talk about that i'm going to change things up a little bit in the new year from the way i've been doing things um I've told some of you this in the past. I'm trying to put together a website for myself because all my podcasts are all over the flipping place. And um, I want to I want to try and do some type of um, a structure, a structured website just for me. <laughs> you know, I've helped so many people build websites down through the years. Uh, God knows how many I've built for people. And most of the other hosts on here have their own websites. I'm here the longest and I don't have one. So I thought, you know what? It's time for me to have my own website. So I'm going to do it. It's going to take me a bit of time. Um, and hopefully I'll improve what's going on here and, and everything else. But, um, you know, as I say, I I want to... I want to increase our audience. I want to increase the audience that we have here tonight. I want to increase, uh, as best I can, awareness. As best I can, the sense of... I mean, what do I want people to be aware of? It's quite simple. Um, I just want people to be aware of that there is a way to live together in peace and harmony where you don't have to hate me. I don't have to hate you. We don't have to work against each other. I don't have to shovel up my dog shit and throw it over your garden wall. You know, we can live in harmony. I don't have to do things that will cause noxious gases and poisonous fluids to be released into the environment. We have technologies that we can use to, you know, to make sure that anything we do, any production we get up to, that it will be okay, that the earth can handle it. We have all these uh, ways of filtering water through reed beds and all that, our wastewater, so that we're not doing harm to nature. We can restore the earth into, I'm going to say it, uh, like the Garden of Eden, folks. We can do that. We don't have to build with concrete. There's many other materials that are just, just, as, uh, just as efficient uh, sorry, Billy's number. Sorry, pardon me. I, I meant to give that out. The number is 06... Not here. I'll type it into the chat box. 069... Uh, 6... Double 3... Bloody hell, is that right? <laughs> sorry, just give me a second. Okay. I'm getting old, folks. There we go. There's the number for Billy. Oh, no, hang on. 65... Double... Yeah, that's it without the hashtag at the bottom. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that hashtag in there. In fact, let me just copy that again and I'll do it again. And that's that's Billy's home number, folks. Um, you know, as I say, don't ring him in unreasonable hours. But during the day, you know, if you ring him, he, he, he'll take your call. He'll talk to you. I mean, that's that's what I did. I just started ringing Billy and talking to him. Um, I mean, I get on very well with Billy. I mean, I consider myself and Billy friends. You know, we're very friendly with each other and I. It's not just the way we have conversations on, on the radio. I was fascinated by Billy, the information and knowledge he had to share. I went down, myself and Andrew went down to visit Billy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, Billy lives in a little piece of heaven, folks. He had all the apple trees and all the different species of apple. He had an old aviary there and he has his vegetables planted and, you know, even his horse. I was on that horse. <laughs> that, was a, that was a monster of a horse, that thing. But, um, you know, um, he kept it real simple though. He said, look, it's, there's the sun, there's the earth. Here's how your crops grow. Here's, here's how you get good water. Here's, here's what you should have grown around you. You should have these plants. You should have food, you know, plants that actually provide food. I mean, I look in my front garden, folks. <laughs> my front garden's a disgrace. I've all these exotic plants in my front garden. Uh, some people think, oh, vineyard garden is lovely. But you can't eat anything from any of them. In fact, some of the bloody plants in my garden, I've done some research, the feckin' things are poisonous. <laughs> You'd be in a bad way if you had something. Uh, and these things are grown all over Ireland. Loads of people have poisonous plants in their gardens. We really shouldn't. Uh, I want rid of them all. I want to change it. 
I, st I still think we can have very pleasant looking plants in our gardens, uh, front and rear, that actually produce food. You know, apple trees are lovely, cherries are lovely, plums, um, all of these types of things. We, we can have them. You know, even like the, the potato plant is not an unattractive plant. You don't have to plant like rows and rows and rows of them. You can have them here and there. And you still get a few spuds. I don't know, no biggie. How am I doing time wise? I'm out. I'm out of time. So I'm going to say goodnight and God bless and talk to you all again soon. It's always a pleasure. Hope to have me uh, website up and running very soon, folks. And uh, talk to you all again. Goodnight. God bless.